Last year, 35 years of frustration came down to this. Marmon throws it up for grabs. Incomplete, and that will be the ball game. The Hail Mary fell short, and for the 36th consecutive time, Nebraska beat Kansas. KU last won this game in 1968. Will today be the day the streak ends? Find out next. It's Kansas and Nebraska, only on Channel 6. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Memorial Stadium. The Kansas Jayhawks welcoming the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Corn Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Kevin Romery. As usual, I'm joined by Chip Buddy and Chip. We've mentioned it 100 times. The buzz today is, is today the day? And quite frankly, that's something that concerns you. Well, it's been going on for a week now, and there's a, we see actually a lot more press here today than we normally see. There's a lot of talk in town and in the, in the newspapers about the streak and will it end today. Kansas probably has a better shot this year going in than they've had in years past. But they need to concentrate on playing the football game today. And the coaching staff is aware of that. So they're coaching to play a football team on the field. You know, it is Nebraska. They've lost to uh, they've lost to Nebraska for 36 years, but we've got to play the game today. Odds makers certainly think this could be the closest matchup in years. It's a one-point game. Jayhawks just an underdog by one. It's been a long time since that's happened. These teams kind of backwards now. Take a look at the offense of these two squads. Nebraska no longer likes to run the football. They need to throw it to succeed. Kansas on the other side, Chip, last week ran the ball great and won, and that's exactly what KU will need to do today. Yeah, you look back at last year's uh, last year's loss, 8-14 to up in, up in Lincoln. The one thing Kansas was not able to do that probably would have been the difference in the game for them if they'd been able to move the football. Last week, Kansas did move the ball well against Missouri. Uh, Nebraska has struggled. You know, in years past, they averaged 300, 400 yards a game in, in rushing offense. Coming into this game, uh, less than 100 yards rushing, and in the uh, in the yards per carry aspect of that, uh, they are at two yards per carry. Now, even that number is deceiving because last two, the last two weeks had negative two rushing yards against Missouri. They had only 16 against Oklahoma, so they are really struggling when they're when they're running the football. And it won't get easier today against the number two rush defense. It will not in the nation. Let's join uh, join uh, now DJ Wetter on the sideline and DJ. The Jayhawks rushing game last week certainly was a big time help to Jason Swanson. That's right. You know, it'll be his third start this season, this evening or this afternoon, excuse me. Last week, just 12 of 19 for 90 yards and two interceptions. But after the game, coach and throughout the week, praises for Swanson. He managed the ball, he controlled the clock, and that's what's important for this offense. Chip talked about the run game. If that's going to be effective, it's going to take the quarterback, Swanson, managing the game to make that effective. And his goal today, do that again and give the offense enough power to win this game. Kansas last beat Nebraska in 1968. The Jayhawks last beat Nebraska on this field in 1967. And Chip, I hate to say it again to you, but will today be the day? It's the Jayhawks and the Cornhuskers. It's Big 12 football coming up next on Channel 6. Football on Channel 6 brought to you in part by Jack Ellen Honda. And welcome back to Memorial Stadium, everyone. Kansas Jayhawks win the opening coin toss chip, defer their decision until the second half, which means the Kansas defense will be on the field first. And I think that, quite frankly, is the way that most Kansas fans would like it. Yeah, and you look at last week against Oklahoma, uh, you know, Nebraska stalled early. Oklahoma was able to get 21 points on them before they did anything. That's why my first key to the game is Kansas needs to score first. They need to get put Nebraska in a hole to force them to make mistakes, get them out of their game plan. Kansas needs to move the football. We talked about this, how well Kansas moved it last week. If 40% of Kansas's offensive plays are between the tackles, Kansas is going to win this football game. They need to get you know, 150, 200 yards on the ground. They need to maintain control of the ball. They also need to force turnovers. Now, Nebraska's thrown nine interceptions over the past uh, past eight games, and they've also had nine fumbles. So there is an opportunity. They're giving up the ball at least, at least twice a game. Kansas can make something happen off that. And for the local folks on the kickoff unit, not only Brandon McAnderson from Lawrence High School, but also walk-on Brian Seymour on the kickoff team. And this is a fired-up unit, a fired-up team, a fired-up stadium chip. The electricity here. Well, about as good as it's ever been against Nebraska. Well, I think the crowd the crowd does realize that Kansas has a really good shot at, at breaking the streak today. As long as, as, you the, as long as the players stay focused on what they need to do. 
We are ready to go. Kansas trying to break the streak of 36 consecutive losses, and there's a great start as Scott Webb does what he's done all season long. He boots one through the end zone. Well, wins out of the north today, so he at Kansas does have the wind. I'd uh, guesstimate about a 10-mile-an-hour wind today. We'll see if we can confirm that later. And this is the man that's in charge of the new-look Nebraska Cornhuskers. It's transfer Zach Taylor. See his season numbers there, more than 1,700 yards, passing 11 touchdowns and 9 interceptions. But, folks, this is not your dad's Nebraska football team. Corey Ross running for about 600 yards, which is tops on this team. And he will get the first carry in a Nebraska team that has not rushed the football well the last two weeks and not a great start here on first down. Take a look at the offensive line for Nebraska. Lydon Murtha stepping in to fill the shoes of Cornelius Fuamatsu Thomas, who was injured. Austin Mann, Co. and Evoire up front. As for the backs and receivers, J.B. Phillips, Nunn, Swift, Todd, and of course, Corey Ross, who is the younger brother of Roger Ross, who played wide receiver for Kansas under Terry Allen. Pickup of one on first down, makes it second down and nine. This is Ross. He'll pick up seven yards across the 25 up to the 27 and bring up third down and three. Take a look at the Kansas defense, and it has not changed much. Jamal Ashley, along with Allen McClinton and Charlton Keith, who leads the team in sacks. Linebackers Nick Reed, Kevin Kane, and Banks Floodman. And then the one part of this team that has changed a little bit, Theo Baines and Aqib Talib joining the secondary. Of course, Charles Gordon playing offense now. Jerome Kemp and Rodney Fowler are your safeties. Defense, number 93. It's a five-yard penalty. Replay second down. Well, we'll replay second down, and apparently someone in a blue uniform jumped just a little bit early. So make it second down and a long four instead of third down and three. So the carry by Corey Ross does not count. Huskers in the eye formation. Back to the ground. Three straight running plays, and boy, Nebraska should have kept that play on second down. They should have. They're saying that uh, Ross was down before the football popped out, so the Huskers now, instead of third down and three, will have it third down and five. And Chip, you mentioned in pregame, the rushing troubles by this Nebraska team, it's really unbelievable when you look at the history of this program. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, well, it's Coach Callahan has turned around to the uh, more of a passing attack for Nebraska, and anytime you do that, it's going to take a couple years to get the guys into the system that can respond to that. But to uh, see a Nebraska football team have negative two yards on the ground against a against a conference opponent like Missouri two weeks ago is just uh, very uh, very different than what uh, most people who've been following well, Nebraska the, football are used to. Cornhuskers pick up just eight yards on three plays, and that brings up fourth down and two. And Sam Cook comes on to kick it away. It's spelled K-O-C-H, but pronounced Cook. And the Jayhawks will get the football for the first time today. Charles Gordon standing at his own 29-yard line. This kick into the wind, a low spiral that Gordon has time, makes the catch at the 35, Charles Gordon. Up close to midfield, and that's where Jason Swanson and the Kansas offense will take over at its own 49-yard line. And Chip, best start this team could have had. Yeah. Yeah, good start for the offense. They get the short field to work with. Just over 50 yards to go for the score. Charles Gordon showing uh, his most valuable uh, addition to the, the Kansas offense is his punt returning duties. Take a look at Jason Swanson's numbers on the season. 381 yards through the air in the last two games. Completing 38 of 69 passes. Didn't have a great week last week, as DJ mentioned, but it was good enough to win with the running game thanks to Clark Green. And speaking of Clark Green, he gets the carry on first down. He twists forward for maybe a yard to midfield. Take a look at the offensive line for the Kansas Jayhawks. Rodriguez along with Whitaker, Ochoa, Cantrell, and Matt Thompson, who's back into the starting lineup after not starting last week. Derek Vine, Charles Gordon, Mark Simmons, Clark Green, and Brandon McAnderson, the backs and receivers. And here comes four wide for the Jayhawks on second down and nine. Swanson will throw. 
Pass is caught, and that will be very close to a first down, depending on the spot. And that is Dominic Rue, who had a couple of catches last week, but hasn't made many catches on the season. He's Take not, but I tell you what, he knew exactly where to stand on that. Uh, made the catch, made the first down. He was right where he needed to be on that marker. Take a look at the uh, front four for the Huskers. Moore, Smith, Adams, and Carricker. Adam Carricker leads this team in sacks. Ickes, McEwen, and Rude, the three linebackers. And then the secondary, Green, Bullocks, Tietke, and Grixby. First stand in 10, Kansas. Football at the Husker 40-yard line. And a good start for Jason Swanson. And he'll look to the air again. Left side ball is batted down, and Jason Swanson is knocked down in the backfield. And a nice play that time from Adam Ickes, one of the linebackers. Adams, Titus Adams, almost had a, it looked like he almost had a shot at getting the interception here, just not fast enough to get away, get out there and get his arm up. But uh, could have been bad news for Kansas. Although I'm not sure at uh, 6'6", 280, he would have got very far in the field. <laughs> he might have gotten caught. He might have. I'm just guessing. So the Catching guys like that is never the problem. It's bringing them down. He might have been able to carry a few folks with him for a while. Second down and 10. Swanson once again from the shotgun. And he will throw it again. A quick out to Mark Simmons. And he might lose a yard on the reception. And that's a nice play out there by the cornerback, Courtney Grixby. Well, that will make it... Uh... Another catch for Mark Simmons, though, so he catches it early this game. Last week, we were wondering if he was going to keep his consecutive streak alive. Didn't make the catch till the third quarter. Did, however, end up having a couple of big catches yes. for first downs in that game. Kansas, of course, beat Missouri last week 13-3. Nebraska lost to Missouri and Mizzou 41-24. Third down and long coming up for KU. Swanson with time, delivers ball, caught Mark Simmons, he may go, touchdown, touchdown Kansas. Kansas, the Lone Star touchdown maker. And an absolute dart from Jason Swanson that covers 40 yards, and the Jayhawks strike first. On a big third down play, Kansas only 34% of the year on third down conversions coming into this football game, but a big, big throw a big big catch Mark Simmons a great job getting away from receivers uh, at, or getting away from uh, secondary Bowman fell down on that play so he was able to make the catch cleanly and go straight to the end zone that's so, how you thread the needle the Jayhawks on the board first and a lot of confidence extra point on the way from Scott Webb is perfect and the Jayhawks have struck first at Memorial Stadium. And Chip, that was one of your keys. Kansas leads at 7 0. Jason Swanson, a great start, and Kansas on the board. This is what this does for the Nebraska. This is what this does for the Kansas team and against the Nebraska team. Kansas now realizes that it's not the Nebraska of old. The Nebraska guys who have been in here year after year and have seen game after game of Nebraska finding a way to win against Kansas, of, of taking the wood to the Jayhawks. Well, this is a chance right now, and this proves that Kansas can play this football game with this Nebraska team. Well, the interesting thing that we have seen this season, Chip, is we've seen this KU defense play great with no help on offense for the most part. Yeah. Now we're beginning to see the defense get a chance, and who knows what it's capable of if the offense can do things like this. Well, we do. We have a, a conference-winning defense. If the offense can step up, we, uh, we're we good to go. Let's check in with DJ Wetters standing by on the sidelines. DJ. Hey, guys, as always, it's a proud Blackshirt defense for Nebraska, but the last two games they've given up touchdowns on their opening Drives. Few people thought that streak would hold, but Kansas gets it done right here. And again, for the third straight week, Nebraska gives up that touchdown on the opening drive. You betcha. Just the second touchdown of the season for Mark Simmons, who now has 30 catches for 441 yards. Let's take a quick timeout. Jayhawks lead it early at Memorial Stadium, folks. Kansas 7, Nebraska nothing. at Memorial Stadium, Jayhawks lead the Cornhuskers by a score of 7 to nothing. Jason Swanson finds Mark Simmons on a 40-yard strike to open the scoring on a beautiful Saturday in Lawrence, Kansas. This kick not going into the end zone. It's picked up by Nebraska, and the Jayhawk D now needs to make a play, and it may not happen here. That's Marlon Lucky who runs it across midfield and a huge return and a huge breakdown on the KU special team. Well, Scott Webb did a good job of, of 
keeping him on the sideline, slowing him down enough so that the pursuit could catch up to him. But yeah, big breakdown on Kansas, uh, Kansas kickoff. So the football into KU territory at the 40-yard line. Zach Taylor is yet to throw a pass. Meanwhile, we expected Kansas to run it more, Chip. One running play for KU, three for Nebraska. Maybe we were wrong in pregame. Maybe this will be old-style football at Memorial Stadium with Nebraska. Corey Ross again, the eye back in there, dotting the eye at just five feet, six inches tall. And, well, guess what? He's going to get another carry. He's the only guy that's done anything so far for Nebraska. So a 62-yard kickoff return from Marlon Lucky sets up the Huskers in Kansas territory. A pickup of one by Ross on first down makes it second down and nine. So when will we see Zach Taylor throw the football? And a four-wide receiver set on second down and long. And finally, Taylor will throw. Has time, drops it off in the flat, but Jayhawk D making a nice play out there. Aqib Tlaib, the freshman cornerback, makes the tackle on J.B. Phillips, the tight end. It's the eighth catch of the season for Phillips. Doesn't make many catches. Don't throw it really too much to the tight end, this Nebraska team. They like don't, but you've got, you've got a guy wide open in the flat. That's a good good throw by the quarterback. Just Tlaib was able to get there quick enough that it, that it did not have an effect. No, part, no positive yard on that. No yards on that. Nebraska just at 32% coming into this game on third down conversions. And they're 0 for 1 so far today. Jayhawks go to the nickel package, and that brings Marcus Hicks in as an extra defensive back. Penalty on the play. Taylor is, nope, this play never happened. Boy, this is one of those that KU'd like to have back. It's going to be all sides on Nebraska. Somebody started early, but KU'd rather have the play because, yeah, as usual, you lose, you guess lose who got back there? Charlton Keith. The boy Charlton Keith, that tells you how loud it is down there, Chip. He never heard a whistle. He thought he made a sack. And again, he leads the Jayhawks with seven. And he'll get plenty of opportunities today. Third down now and 13. Huskers need to get to the Jayhawk 30-yard line. 9.06 left in the first quarter. Kansas leads at 7-0 thanks to Mark Simmons and a 40-yard touchdown snag from Jason Swanson is into it. Lots of noise coming from the Kansas fans. Still a lot of red though in here today. Taylor, Brandon Perkins got him and then Jamal Ashley had a hand on him. Pass is completed but not much here. Nick Reed makes the tackle after a very short completion. Boy, that's what pressure does. Good, good pressure from the outside. It was Dane Todd who made the catch, and boy, Brandon Perkins, Jamal Ashley, yeah, he's, you name it, just about everybody got a hand on Zach Taylor. Man, that was a, a good job of Zach Taylor keeping his poise, able to complete that ball with a lot of arms banging down on him, a lot of big arms banging down on him. And Sam Cook back in to kick it away, his second punt of the day. And Charles Gordon standing at his own 10. Only reason Nebraska even penetrated into KU territory is because of the big kickoff return. Cook trying to keep it out of the end zone. It's going to be tough. Oh, look, it's like a wedge. It lands at the three and backs up. And that is perfect if you're a Nebraska fan. 7.53 left in quarter number one. Kansas gets the football for the second time, but this time deep in its own territory. Yeah, that's okay. Good. We've got a timeout on the field. Let's take one, two. Jayhawks get the football when we return. Kansas gets the football on the three-yard line here in quarter number two, seven fifty or quarter number one, excuse me, seven fifty-two left in the first quarter. Kansas up by a touchdown and chip. On the Jayhawks end, happy to get it at the three. You know they really are at the at the end of that punt. The, at the end of they punt, uh, the Nebraska players. I don't know who it was, but when he was when the ball came down, a great punt. 
by Nebraska. You're going to see him start pushing it a little bit towards the end zone right there. It's rolling it. Well, this referee right on the left here didn't see him pushing it. Was about to spot it inside the one yard line, but the referee that's coming across from the uh, from the sideline actually made the, uh, Top of the made screen. the made the correct call. Thank goodness. And uh, put it inside the uh, put it inside the three. So not great field position for Kansas, but at least better than than having the offensive lineman's feet inside the inside the end zone. So far for Nebraska, six plays. Two, three and outs, a total of 10 yards. Kansas, meanwhile, five plays, 51 yards, and of course, the big one to Mark Simmons. And now the Jayhawks come out with, how many tight ends, Chip, are you allowed to have on one play? <laughs> because they got a bunch Put of them, them in there now. Clark Green back there, and I'd expect him to touch the football a couple times. Yeah, Jason Swanson may be changing the play. Handed to Clark and Nebraska, well, waiting for number 30 to get the football in this situation. Clark, of course, last week, 22 carries for 125 yards and the touchdown. One of his best games of the season, and, well, let's be honest, Missouri just kind of brings that out of him. Yeah. A loss of a yard is going to make it second down and 11. And the Jayhawks now with a couple of wide receivers. Charles Gordon into the game along with Mark Simmons. And that is Charles in motion. They're going to throw it. And Swanson's in trouble, and he's going to get sacked for a safety. Well, Chip, in that situation, if you're going to throw the football, you got to make a quick decision. Yeah, it's got to. It has got to be up in the air. Now, Kansas. Uh, right now, not a good, throw it. not a good job uh, picking up the uh, picking up the Brit McEwen, who uh, running in from the linebacker, the Mike linebacker spot. Kansas not able to pick him up, putting pressure on Swanson immediately, and leads to the safety. So the Jayhawks now with a free kick from their own 20-yard line. We'll see if it's either Kyle Tucker or Scott Webb. It appears that it will be Webb. And with the wind and his leg, you never know. He might be able to get this one to the end zone. However, the last time KU kicked off, the kickoff unit didn't do its job, which led to that possession being started inside the KU-5 and which ultimately leads to the safety. Well, I, I bet Clint Bowen had some words for the guys uh, as soon as they came off that last the last kickoff team, so I'd be surprised if they make that mistake again. And indeed it will be Webb, so the Jayhawks lead it by a score of 7-2. to two. Looks a little weird on the scoreboard. So the Husker defense for the first time today really flexing its muscle. So Marlon Lucky along, and he's the one who returned it last time, is back there deep to go along with Tier Green. His cousins of Amon Green, or from Omaha, and here's the kick. And this again will be Marlon Lucky from his own five-yard line. He had the big one just uh, kick off the go. This time, though, stumbles across the 25. And now the defense put in a situation that it can really, uh, really deal with. Yeah. He just he pretty much fell forward, started, he, uh, started diving before anybody even hit him. I think he outran his feet. <laughs> You do that pretty often, don't you? I, yeah, I'm, I'm cat-like. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chip, I think a little bit of a surprise so far. The Huskers have not really thrown the football much. Just two for two for Taylor for six yards, four carries for Corey Ross. That's about it. Yeah, both little short flat passes to the, uh, to the east end of the field. And more Corey Ross, and why not? He barrels his way across the 30 to the 34, and that's a pickup of eight. <laughs> Tell you what, this is the game plan that's beat Kansas for 36 years. Why wouldn't they? Uh, maybe they should just keep it on the ground. And that's basically what this Nebraska team did last year in that 14 to 8 victory up in Lincoln. The game that, quite frankly, neither team wanted to win. Kansas had its opportunities. Of course, the Hail Mary at the end of the game, falling shy of 
a Jayhawk receiver. The overall is nine on first down. It's second down and a long one. That's Cody Glenn who gets the carry, and he's not going to get the first down. He is shoved backwards. That's Nick Reed in his grill. And that's going to bring up now third down and maybe two. Cody Glenn's the third and one guy. He's the guy you're going to bring in in this situation well, almost every time. Number seven's uh, doing, a, doing a blocking drill here. Mike Rivera comes into the game. Theo Baines leaves. So the Jayhawks go with an extra linebacker here. Expecting Nebraska to run it on third down and very short. Now, 0 for 2 so far in third down conversions, but this is a pretty short uh, a short conversion to have to make. Glenn again. Rivera's got him. Can Kansas hold him? I think they did. They I did. think the Jayhawk defense stopped Glenn put him again. Short. Banks Floodman in there. And that football needed to get to the 36, and it is well shy. If they measure this, they may not even have to, but it's short. Indeed, it's fourth down. No need for a measurement. And the Jayhawk D, after giving up nine yards ship on first down, holds on two, something in one bounds. And this will be the, this is the third, third three and out for the Nebraska offense. 5-15 left in the first quarter, and Kansas will get the football back. It's 7-2. Charles Gordon standing at his own 23-yard line. Cook gets it away, and Gordon should have time. Makes the catch, and he's drilled and fumbles, and a Jayhawk needs to get on that football. And there's a flag We've on the play. we got a flag on the play. And that was, yeah, no, 20, who was that? Was take, that Gary Green or? Yeah, take a look not. at this. I think it was Rodney Fowler came up with that football. Yeah, and for Nebraska, it looked like uh, Rigoni. Brandon Rigoni looks like the, uh, the, man, the man who was charged with the penalty. Block in the back during the return by the return. Ten-yard penalty. First down, Kansas. So another ten yards backwards for KU, and boy, the Jayhawks going to start deep in their own territory again, back at the 14-yard line. So it was not on Ragone. It wasn't on the Nebraska squad. It was on Kansas. We have a timeout on the field. 4.55 left in quarter number one. It's 7-2 Kansas, and the Jayhawks have the football when we return right here on Channel 6. Jason Swanson and the Jayhawk offense back on the field for the third time. First possession was great. Kansas scored a touchdown. Second possession started at the three. Nebraska sacked Swanson in the end zone for a safety, and that's how we have our score at 7-2. So holding penalty, the uh, illegal block in the back pushes Kansas back to its own 14, and that's where the Jayhawks take over first and 10. And Clark Green may be back to the line of scrimmage. Nebraska doing a fantastic job right now on the Jayhawks rushing the football. That's three carries now for Clark for no yards. And then Swanson, of course, gets the negative two. Kansas is running some, they're, the running plays that they're running are a little bit slower developing than some of the stuff they ran against Missouri last year. So it's allowing Nebraska, they've got a, a strong and speedy defensive line, allowing them to make penetration. So back to the air, and another bullet from Jason Swanson to Mark Simmons. I mean, an absolute frozen rope right on the money. He's gunning it today, Chip. Good and good poise. Somebody, you know, coming through for Nebraska. It was Moore came through, came through the, the defensive line for Nebraska. Bowman made the tackle on that play. Maybe a touchdown saving tackle. Yes, I would say so. That's a very similar play opposite side that was uh, on the touchdown throw. Just a dart. Didn't fall down this time. It's an absolute dart from Swanson. Three steps, look, fire, and complete it. A big first and ten out to the 34. Hawks have the win, 357 here in the first quarter. Although it doesn't look like the wind's blowing too much. Swanson now going to run it. And he's going to pick up maybe five yards out to the 39. The most effective running play so far today for KU. Well, it, it helps when you've got a threat to uh, to complete passes and, and to make uh, to make 
good gains by putting the ball in the air, that opens up plays like that. Particularly when you when you mostly run a one-back set like Kansas does, you've got to include the threat of the quarterback on the ground to be effective. Clark Green continues to stay in the game back there with Swanson. We have not seen John Cornish yet today. Huskers showing blitz. Now Swanson changing the play on second down and five. Instead, they'll hand it off. Clark Green muscles his way forward for a yard, maybe two. It's going to bring up third down and short. Take the ball back deep. Kansas just trying to get in offensive line, trying to get in front of guys. But Nebraska was able to pursue too too far to where the uh, the point of intersection at the line of scrimmage was. Well, a pickup of two yards is going to make it third down and three. Football at the Jayhawk 41. Hawks need to get across the 44. Swanson in trouble. Lots of pressure. Tries to dump it off to his tight end, and it's over the head of Derek Fine, and the Jayhawks will have to kick it away. However, the offense did get out of the hole, picked up a first down, and now the defense gets some room to work with here. Got some, yes, and got some room to go. Kansas, I mean, not much of an offensive show for either team. Kansas with three first downs, Nebraska with a goose egg at this point. So much like we expected coming into this game, the defenses are going to be the ones that really determine uh, they're going to be the big players. Husker showing block. Kyle Tucker takes the low snap, takes his time, and it's not very far, but it is really, really high. It'll hit at the 24 and bounce out of bounds on the Nebraska sideline. The officials will mark it at the 22-yard line. So, well, not bad. 2-12 left in quarter number one. Kansas leads it by five. Anything surprise you so far, Chip? Nebraska's running the ball a lot more than I thought they would be coming into this game. We've got seven, seven rushes on the ground. 13 yards, not a whole lot, but uh, you know this is their this is their fourth series. They went three and out on the first three, and out of those uh, those nine plays, seven of them have been on the ground. And the other two have gone for what six yards. Corey Ross dances his way across the 25 to the 26. It's going to be a pickup of four. Sure looked like he picked up more than that on this run, but didn't really get much. Well, that's the second time they've let off with him coming out of the series. Got nine yards on the first the first play last series. Rodney Allen in on first that time. Uh, first down for the Jayhawks getting into the backfield. So a second down and six situation now for Zach Taylor. Dump it off in the backfield. That's Ross, who gets past Jerome Kemp. Kemp had a chance to maybe drop him for a yard or two loss. Instead, Ross picks up about three, which will bring up third down and three. But all the passes so far, Chip, have been right along the line of scrimmage. The old West Coast offense, and Kansas has done a nice job of staying home and pushing the, the Huskers out towards the sidelines rather than going upfield. Yes. And Kansas forced Nebraska into four straight three and outs. Phillips, the man in motion. Taylor, ball batted down, and Kansas indeed another three and outs. And that looked like it was Tim Allen. I believe you're correct. Got his, uh, got his arm up on that. Big number 90, keep an eye on him there. Bang. Just a good basketball play there. <laughs> got his hand up. And That's right. Got it in the passing lane. Taylor at 6'2", usually can see over defenders, but not over Tim Allen. So Kansas will get the win for another minute and 23 seconds. And Sam Cook will kick for the fourth time in this quarter. Chip, when was the last time a Nebraska team punted four times in a quarter against Kansas? Uh, 1992. <laughs> and this one is blocked, and it might be a special touchdown. team's touchdown. touchdown. Darren Russ put it on the board. Darren Russ, who's been a fantastic special teams player for the Jayhawks during his career, 
Porter here, always been big on tackles, able to put it into the end zone on a blocked punt. Take a second look. Good snap. That ball is blocked. And it appears two that hands, it was number 17. That. Give it to Ronnie Amati. The guy who started at cornerback who got the block chip and Kansas has scored its second touchdown of the quarter. The extra point is on the way and it is perfect. And we had mentioned the Kansas defense had not come up with a touchdown yet this season. Well, guess what? Roddy Amati Take gets the block. This. And that is, that's his first block kick of his career. Number 17, and Darren Russ. Obviously the first touchdown of his career. Grabs the football, <laughs> protects it, That's runs right. it into the end zone, and the home folks going ballistic. That's smart stuff, two hands. I don't know if you saw it, Kevin Kane got knocked down on the sideline during the celebration. <laughs> I'm sure he enjoyed it. What a start for the Jayhawks. Could this be the day? 36 straight years. Easy. Nebraska. A lot of time left. There's plenty of time, but it's been a long time since the Jayhawks have had a start like this. And bad news for the Huskers. Kansas D is coming back onto the field. That's right. So far, 12 plays, 26 yards. And the crowd getting louder. Folks in red, not so excited. Well, a number of Nebraska fans here at the courtesy of the athletic department. The tire slashing last year. You betcha. This again will be Marlon Lucky from his own goal line. Marlon Lucky has a big one already, and he might take it back. Goodbye, Marlon Lucky. Touchdown, Nebraska. And what has happened to the Kansas special teams kickoff unit today? That is his first TD of the year. His longest previous was 38 yards, and I'm not sure that his first one, his first one was longer than that uh, today. Officially, it will go down, I believe, as 99 yards. Nope. In fact, they'll give him the 100. And there is a flag. Where, was, a where flag did that on the flag, flag come from? Wow, what a turn of events here. Chip, did you see a penalty flag? I didn't see a penalty flag, yeah. not until Hank Booth made the announcement. Well, there it is. But that's a big break for the Jayhawks. An illegal block will take seven points off the board and move this football all the way back to the 10-yard line. Are you kidding me? Boy, and that takes wind out of the sails of the, uh, the Cornhuskers. And the Jayhawks special teams kickoff unit is absolutely bailed out. And now the D's ready to go. Four straight three and outs. Corey Ross gets the handoff. He's hit in the backfield. First by Charlton Keith, then he's brought down by Jermail Ashley. Tim Allen also in there. Along with Banks Floodman. Geez, they just keep getting up. You name it. Yeah. So that's nine nine carries on the ground. A loss of a yard on first and ten. 17 total yards on the ground for Nebraska. Total yards, 26. Clock winding down in quarter number one. 25 seconds of counting. Another penalty, and this play never started. And this is going to be on Nebraska. So an unbelievable start to this first quarter, and it's getting better, Chip, for KU. Well, a couple of big breaks on penalties. First, obviously. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 76. Half the distance to go, second down. That's going to be on, that's gonna be on Lyden Murtha. He's filling in, of course. And left tackle starting today in place of Cornelius Fumatu Thomas. 
So another break. You like that, don't you? I do. In practice. It's easier for you to say that than Cornhuskers. <laughs> yes, it, <laughs> that was a struggle in pregame for some reason. Second down and 16. Football at the Nebraska four-yard line. Huskers need the 20. Zach Taylor on the day three for four through the air, but just nine yards. And this thing's getting uglier by the minute for Nebraska. So a timeout on the field. Kansas football on Channel 6 brought to you in part by Lawrence Automotive Diagnostics. We stand behind our work and we care. Also by KC Bobcat, one tough animal. And by the mailbox. Come to the mailbox for all your packing and shipping needs. We know how. Well, total yards in this one, Kansas. 12 plays, 75 yards. Nebraska. Just 13 plays for 25 yards and a huge crowd today, Chip, not only in the stands, but on the hill. A beautiful day for football. The trees are uh, turning colors. There's Johnny Beck, one of the former, former players for KU. Big time kicker for Kansas. Kansas City Piper High School product. Kicked for KU for four years. But can you say enough about the KUD so far, Chip? As advertised so far, four possessions, not only a throw, four three and outs, but put seven on the board with the block punt. They sure did. If you take net scores, Kansas really has got a net plus Kansas offense, a net plus a five with the safety they gave up. Kansas yeah. defense beating the yeah. Kansas offense seven to five right now. Nine of the uh, 16 points scored by the D so well, far Well, I guess today. You, can't, you can't count the extra point. So really at a five, we're at a six, six tie. Directly responsible though. Six, six tie. For those points. <laughs> That's a stat we need to keep. Well, for Zach Taylor, things will not get, uh, will not get any quieter at this end of the field. And at this rate, Nebraska may not run another play. Four seconds left in this first quarter. Kansas three first downs, Nebraska zero. Huskers with nine rushes for 16 yards. Kansas came in second ranked rushing defense in the nation behind Oklahoma of all people. And that number I believe is getting better as we speak. Shotgun for Taylor on second down and long. And nobody can hear. Play clock down to five. Oh, and they're at the open end He's of the end hurry. zone. He'll get it off with two seconds. In trouble. Ball is caught, but a short gain. Sliding down at the 10-yard line. That's Nate Swift. Boy, and that's a good throw with Jerome Kemp coming in on the Jerome Kemp coming in on the blitz there. Got very, very close. Nick Reed as well. Kansas brought the house that time. An excellent job of uh, Taylor being able to dump that ball off. Swift, the favorite target of Taylor. Back to the original line of scrimmage, and we've got a timeout. Quarter number one is over. Kansas leads it by a score of 14 to 2. 15 minutes down, 45 to go. We're back for quarter number two after this. Kansas leads it 14 to 2 as we start at quarter number two. And once again, Nebraska third down and long so far, Chip. 0 for 4 on the day. Let's check in with DJ Wetter now standing down, uh, standing by on the sideline. DJ. I think, we've mentioned, I think we've mentioned it before, guys, but 1968, the last time the Jayhawks knocked off the Huskers. Back in 68, first class stamp, five cents, gallon of gas, 35 cents. As for TV, you would have been watching. Do not adjust your set. Don't adjust your set right now. Kansas actually winning. <laughs> 14 to 2. <laughs> Thanks, DJ. <laughs> How long did it take him to work that up? 55 cents for a gallon of gas. Taylor taking his time. Ball incomplete. That's another three and out, folks. And if you're Sam Cook, you're a little bit nervous standing back in your own end zone right now to kick this thing away. The fifth punt of the day coming up for the Cornhuskers. Kansas last beat Nebraska in this stadium in 1967. Pepper Rogers, I believe, was in control here. That's a long time ago. I wasn't so much of a fan back then. <laughs> yeah, I bet you were. <laughs> Your parents probably weren't either. 
This time Cook gets it away, and Charles Gooden, Gordon should have plenty of time making the catch at the 43, and the All-American moves to the outside. But the Jayhawk offense starts inside Nebraska territory. Charles tried to get back to the middle and, and take it around the uh, the near sideline, at least the near sideline to us, the west side of the field. Uh, had a lot of room out there, but just Nebraska was, Nebraska corralled them into that uh, that east sideline. He couldn't get back out. Kansas football on Channel 6 brought to you in part by Dr. Van Blericum, helping you find the beautiful smile you've always dreamed of. That's Dr. Van Blericum at 843-2636. Also by Crown Toyota, the new indoor kingdom is now open. Come see the largest indoor showroom in the region. Also by New Physical Therapy, helping people help themselves. And by Jim Clark Motors, where you always get a doggone good deal. 14.43 left until the halftime break. Kansas with the football and leading by 12. Kansas offense starts in Nebraska territory. First and 10 at the 46-yard line, and Clark Green still out there. We still have not seen John Cornish today. And speaking of Mr. Green, boy, a big week last week against the Tigers, Chip, but nothing so far today. Going to try to run it off tackle, off the guard right side of the line, but Ryan Cantrell a little bit too much, got beat a little bit across his face, and the penetration from the backside able to stop Green in the backfield. Loss of a yard for him. So call it second down now and 11. Hawks will go with four wide receivers. And again, Jason Swanson may be changing the play. He's done that several times so far today. He's going to dump it off in the flat. That ball caught by Brian Murph. Down the sideline, a first down. That was a half a step away from a Nebraska touchdown. It Instead, was. Kansas with a huge gainer from Brian Murph. Yeah, 49. Ikes was just about to go to the end zone on that. Linebacker, yeah, Adam Ickes. Ickes. Man, he stepped in the way, and that looked, when Swanson let it go, it didn't look good. Good news is Ickes is a linebacker, not a safety. <laughs> so instead of a touchdown for Nebraska, it's a 25-yard pickup for Kansas. Football now down at the 21-yard line. Jayhawks already lead it 14-2. Swanson, quarterback keeper, falling forward for maybe a yard. Look at Swanson's numbers today. Five of seven shift through the air, 96 yards and a touchdown. Last week, 12 of 19 for just 90 yards against Missouri. Well, Mark Simmons had a couple of big catches, a nice catch for Murph right there. All it takes is a couple of nice ones like that. Just like on the ground, all it takes is a couple of nice 40-yard uh, 40, 40 runs uh, to get your get your average up. Amazing how those audibles work out. Yeah. Vickis makes the catch well, he's, and he's takes becoming, it off. It was a bad idea. Instead, it's a 25-yard pickup. He's becoming a much a much smarter quarterback. He's had, getting some game experience now. He's able to make adjustments on the fly. The coaches are getting more comfortable with him doing that. Clark Green. Adds up for back. good things. Too bad he's only got a couple games left. Yeah. Too bad it isn't September instead of November. So Green picks up a couple yards inside the 20, down to the 19, and that'll bring up third down and eight. Kansas just one of two, only, only faced two third downs so far on the day. Mark Simmons, Brian Murph, Charles Gordon wide right, Dominic Rue by himself at the bottom of your screen. Swanson's pass is picked off. One of those big linebackers that's picks McEwen. it off for Nebraska. And that's the, their number one guy, Corey McEwen. And that's, and that's, that's costly because that costs KU three points. And that's his second interception of the, of the year. His other interception, he's had some experience running this back. His other interception ran back for 38 yards. That, this one looks like it ran back for about uh, 20. Pass intended for Mark Simmons, and it was behind him. He has been Swanson's favorite target today. Three catches, 60 yards, and, of course, the 40-yard score. 
So the Nebraska defense now makes a play and gets the football back at its own 34-yard line. We've got 12-16 left in quarter number two. Jayhawks lead it by 12. It's 14-2. And now Taylor gets the benefit of the wind at his back for the first time today. First and ten, and the first first down of the game for the Cornhuskers right there. Pass complete to the tight end, J.B. Phillips, at the 47-yard line. And that's uh, that's going to be his longest reception of the year coming into this. His uh, 10 yards was his longest reception, so that's... Uh, it, well, so it, 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 shows, it shows you how they use their tight ends. They use them for the short routes. His second catch of the day for 14 yards. We mentioned earlier, only seven catches coming into this day for Phillips. Taylor, play action fake. He'll bootleg out looking long. Dumps it off short and a great play on the sideline by the youngster. That's a keep to leave. Just a freshman. Started the season at safety. And look at the play he's making as a cornerback now. Of course, last year had the play of the season when he picked off the pitch on the option yeah. from Brad Smith. Talked to him earlier earlier this week at the press conference and asked him about that change. And Chip he said, you know, in, in high school I was a cornerback, so the switch was going to safety. He says going back's pretty easy. Well, and he's done well. He's got five breakups, six including this one, which actually leads the team in pass breakups. Second down and 10, Taylor in trouble, and he's sacked, and guess who? Big number 99, <laughs> that's number eight on the season. As we've told you several times, Charlton Keith leading the Jayhawks in that category. No shocker here, huh? No shocker. Tim Allen get a little shove in there for fun, too. But well, we're going to start to see the Nebraska offensive line get, get frustrated uh, as Nebraska starts to pass more because they're going to have to start to pass more. Kansas is going to pin their ears back and really go after uh, really go after some, uh, some penetration, really go after Taylor. Not the situation you want to be in if you're Nebraska. Third and long, looking long. The ball is just out of the reach of Todd Peterson. Peterson, one of the about eight wide receivers that plays a lot on this Nebraska team. He's only had four grabs on the year, but two of those have been big plays for touchdowns, and he had three grabs against Missouri two weeks ago. Sam Cook once again. Back on the field for Nebraska, which means once again, number three, back deep for Kansas. Jayhawks have already blocked one punt today. Keep an eye on number 17. That was Ronnie Amati that did it the first time, but it's like, hey, you may set up for the return here. Gordon fumbled once. He hangs on here, stays on his feet. Charles Gordon dances across the 20 to the 23-yard line. He got about three more yards there than anybody expected he would. Well, good news for Husker fans. Nebraska finally picked up a first down. <laughs> 19 plays for 37 yards, and Chip, you of all people can laugh at that because for about the last 36 years, <laughs> it's been the reverse. Timeout on the field, 10.50 left in the second quarter. Kansas continues to lead. Kansas leads it 14-2. Jayhawks have, well, quite honestly, not been in this position very often. Chip, the 1993 game that came down to the two-point conversion, 21-20, and then the 99 game where Newcomb had a, a punt return and a big reception in the fourth quarter to beat Terry Allen's team, 24-17. The 86 game where we were just 10 touchdowns away from keeping it close. <laughs> just 10. <laughs> You'll never forget. Describe that game. I, I, I can't. It's just a blur. Have <laughs> blacked you, out. Have you ever been time. beat up? Describe that. <laughs> It'll pick up about six yards for, uh, for Clark Green on first down. No John Cornish. Let's find out why. DJ Wetter. Hey, guys, not, ex not exactly sure why John Cornish not out there, but he's not even in the offensive huddle during timeouts, during uh, downtime. And he's got his helmet off on the sideline, standing back, unlike a lot of the players. So not really sure what the situation is, but it doesn't look like he'll be in anytime soon. Dump off pass to Clark Green. I'd like to call it a screen pass, but I didn't see any blockers. But he does get the first down. 
playing it. Interesting, John Cornish, I know some of his relatives are in town today, so he'd like to get the opportunity to play. They, of course, from Canada. We'll take a look at this. Good job. Clark Green just lets his man go upfield, turns around, makes a nice, easy target, makes the catch, gets upfield. First down. Then he did. He got a pick from the, uh, the referee, Randy Crystal. <laughs> Actually, I, th I think it affected Clark's uh, run path more than uh, more than it helped him. Might have been able to cut it up a little bit sooner. Nonetheless, it's a first down. And back to the color of money. And he's drilled by Daniel Bullocks, of course, whose older brother Josh played in Nebraska, playing now in the NFL. Bloodlines run pretty uh, pretty deep red for Nebraska for that family. So a pickup of one for Clark Green, rushing the football. Wow, tail of, uh, tail of two weeks, Chip. So far today for Kansas, well, 10 rushes for 12 yards. Make it 11 rushes for 12 yards. Second and nine, Swanson bought some time. Ball is incomplete, intended, I think, for Charles Gordon, but that ball was tipped. Bo Rude back in coverage, and luckily for Kansas, that was just an incompletion. And I think if, if he wouldn't have got his hand on it and pushed it to the outside, I think Nebraska would have had a better shot at, at picking it. Corey McEwen is the one who, well, he's the one that got back there and messed this play up from the start for KU. Middle linebacker coming on the blitz. Well, the one thing Nebraska can't let Kansas do, they can't afford to have Kansas get comfortable in running the football, mixing up the run in the pass. So they're going to start blitzing a lot more to try to force decisions from an inexperienced quarterback. And that's just how they're looking at Swanson. Third down and nine. Shuffle pass to Clark Green. He's got all day in front of him. Clark Green across midfield. He rumbles inside the 40, down to the 35. Man, that's a quarterback's best friend. Two-yard flip gets you 40 <laughs> yards on the stats. I mean, nobody out there for Clark Green. Bo Root yeah. never had a chance. Right, good job of splitting the defenders there. That's what you teach your running backs and your receivers. If you've got two converging defensive backs, you split them. The hope is that one of the guys are going to pull off a little bit. That's the that's that's the way to get the extra two or three yards. He did a great job for that 30 yard 30 yard pass reception. Free safety Blake Teedke made the tackle. Clark in trouble here on first down, but he manages to squirm his way forward and picks up a yard. Chip that Brian, time, Clark Brian. trying the right side, and, and you yeah, watch Brian, the replay and yeah, a Derek, couple of Derek, missed blocks. Yeah, Derek Fine uh, really got overpowered on that play. Not, uh, it's not going to look too good on films for him tomorrow. <laughs> Been Doesn't look too good on films for today. <laughs> You've been in that film session before. Hey, huh? I always look good. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Especially in that 70 to nothing drop. <laughs> I, didn't sure I didn't play that game, actually. Might have been the reason why. Quick pass to Brian Murph. First down. He's made a couple of nice catches today. Murph coming in. Only 20 grabs for 214 yards with a touchdown. But you know what? He's picked up a couple first downs for KU today. Corners coming into the game. Clark Green walking off. And it's going to be a Jayhawk first down. Both Clark Green and Murph leave the game. Hence you see John Cornish, who leads this team in rushing. At least he did coming in. 88 carries for 451 yards. Well, he's, Clark, he's Green still had Clark Green had Clark Green's big run of the day was on our, was going to count towards a reception. Well, it's really close actually. Cornus leads him by a yard if you update the stats. It's 451 to 450. Coach Mangino trying to keep it close. Yeah, wants to keep it even. Swanson throwing one to the end zone and that ball should have been intercepted. Boy, two Huskers back there. Both should have made the catch and neither did. Blake Teethke is the one that's probably most frustrated. Yeah, that was a poor decision to throw the football into that coverage. Swanee never saw the he safety. Just put, yeah, just put it put it straight up like that. Almost looked like like uh, Mark could have came back and uh, picked that ball off the tip. So Kansas in the red zone again. 0 for 1. Trips down there today with an interception. Showing blitz and 
Swanee wants to take another look at that. Have a conference, so he's going to call timeout. 7.35 left in the first half. Neither team has been able to score yet here in quarter number two. Kansas now with seven first downs. Nebraska with one. Rushing yards, neither team can rush the football today. Nebraska with 10 carries for nine yards. Kansas 12 for 13. Jason Swanson has been effective. He did throw the one interception, but other than that, he's eight for 13, 142 yards and a touchdown. That's all here in the first half. Kansas football on Channel 6 brought to you in part by People's Bank in Lawrence, the home of Banking Unusual. Sixth in Wakarusa, 23rd in Harper, and at 31st in Iowa. Also by Dr. Linehan and The Spectacle for all your eye care and eyewear needs. Dr. Linehan and The Spectacle in the Hillcrest Shopping Center at 935 Iowa. Also by Jack Allen of Honda, your hometown Honda dealer for over 32 years in the Lawrence Auto Plaza. That's Jack Allen, a Honda. You're going to like it. Also by High V, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. And by Phone Directories Company. Great people, great books, great results. Total yards in this game, 155 to 37. Kansas. Don't act so surprised, Kevin. I'm not. I've seen this D. I'm a little surprised by the 155 total yards Kansas has put up. I'm not surprised by Nebraska's output. We've seen this defense all year. Jason Swanson, though, having a dandy day after struggling a little bit a week ago. So far, Zach Taylor for Nebraska, just 5 of 9 for 28 yards. The Huskers really haven't done anything offensively to hurt Kansas. And uh, Kansas brings in BMAC and John Cornish. A rare second, eye formation for KU. Particularly on second long. It's all part of the plan, Chip, buddy. All part of the plan. To be Cornish's first play, he has not touched the football today. He has been electric at times this season. He'll get the option here. And he's got some room. John Cornish inside the 20, inside the 10. The Canadian battles his way down to the 6. And that's why they like John Cornish. It's not the first tackle doesn't bring him down. The second tackle, when you think he's you think he's going to fall down, you think he's going to be tackled, he's going to bust through, he's going to get another five yards or more. On this play, everybody's expecting him to tackle. He stays on his feet. Great balance. Another three yards for the Jayhawks. Puts him at the seven-yard line. First down. First down and goal. Kansas trying to add to a 12-point lead. It's 14-2. John Cornish will stay in there. Jason Swanson will go from the shotgun with four wide receivers. Look for the inside handoff. There it is, John Cornish. John Cornish gets to the five. Trying to spread everybody out in a Cornhusker uniform and run it up the middle. Chip, you had mentioned early in the game you wanted to see Kansas run it up the middle. I do. I want to see him run it right between the tackles, this sort of play. You know, you looked at last week versus uh, versus Missouri. Cornish averaged, uh, you know, five, five and a half yards a carry. Clark Green averaged five and a half yards a carry. It's because they're running the ball inside. Safety Blake Teeth, he makes the stop on first and goal. Second down and five. Another option play, Swanson will keep it. And I think he probably should have pitched that one. I know John Cornish wanted the football. Keep an eye on 29 out wide. Look at his reaction. He comes into the screen. Well, there was. Yeah, which he did. Bullock's 14 was out wide. I think he would have been able to uh, either pick up John Cornish. But in a situation like that, you've got a you've got a running back with the skills that John Cornish has. Those are matchups that you want. You want to force the secondary. You want Swanee tackles. throwing the football, not necessarily running with it. You want John Cornish running with the football and not throwing it. And here you go, Chip. Third down and five. Last time Kansas down here, the interception. So they'll keep it on the ground. Here's John Cornish running right, and he never had a chance. Nebraska's defense does its job, and the Jayhawks will send in the field goal unit. Maybe. They're not running out there now. They're, Coach Mangino's telling them to stay in there. It is fourth and four. What do you and think, here, Chip? Come, here comes the field goal unit. Yeah. 
Yeah, this early in the game, you take the points. You bet. As frustrating as it is to be on the seven first and goal, we joked about this uh, last week as well. The best, the best place for Kansas to get the ball to get the first down is on the 12-yard line because then you've got another chance for a first. This will be a 21-yard field goal for Scott Webb. Basically a long extra point, and it is good, and Kansas leads it by 15. It's 17-2, and I think Kansas may have gotten a little conservative chip down in the red zone this time after the interception. Didn't put the football in the air once running it down to the seven. Well, whether you run it or pass it, you've got to execute to make the plays work. So it doesn't matter if, if they're running it, uh, you know, right up the middle, running a belly play or, or pitching to the outside. You've got to get guys blocking defenders if you're going to make plays like that work, and that's what it comes down to. Scott Webb's field goal is 11th of the season. Gives KU a 15-point lead, 446 left in the first half. This game has been dominated by the Jayhawk defense. Kevin Romery, Chip Buddy, and DJ Wetter with you at Memorial Stadium where the Kansas Jayhawks lead the Nebraska Cornhuskers by 15 points. It's 17-2 with 446 left in the first half. Nebraska's run 19 plays and picked up just 37 yards. Zach Taylor is 5 of 9 for 28 yards. They've rushed for 9 yards total, and Kansas goes with the old pooch kick into the wind. Maybe trying to run down there and catch one, but Nebraska calls for the fair catch, and we'll take over at, where are they going to put it, the 32. Kansas figures that uh, Nebraska taking over on the 35 is a little bit safer, particularly given Kansas's defense than uh, having a run back. Well, I'm not sure they want him to run it back after the way no, Marlon Lucky uh, has exactly, done it exactly. They don't even want to give him a chance. Yeah. He got bailed out by the one penalty. It's, it's, it's going to be coverage, coverage, coverage is going to be the mantra for the kickoff team from here on out. Taylor will throw on first down. He gets drilled but delivers a strike and it's caught. A pickup of nine for Terrence Nunn. Hit hard by Charlton Keith. Surprise, surprise. Nunn, a sophomore from Houston, Texas. 27 grabs on the season. Leads this team in touchdowns with four. Makes his first grab today. And give him eh, give him nine yards, maybe eight. Well, you know, and if Taylor down. Taylor goes down, there's only one other person on this on the Nebraska team that's throwing a pass, and that's Corey Ross. He's taken every snap. Every, every snap. He's thrown every pass that... Uh, that Nebraska's thrown this year has come from Zach Taylor's hand, except for a, 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 Corey, a Corey Ross 18-yard touchdown pass on the halfback pass. And Ross rumbles to midfield and picks up the first down. Just the second first down of this game for Nebraska. Four minutes now and rolling in quarter number two. Well, the Kansas defense would like to keep Nebraska off the board here to close out half number one and head to the locker room with a 15-point lead. The crowd is getting louder. Taylor, another quick pass, which oh, is batted Kemp away. Almost, almost caught it on the rebound. France Hardy. The intended target. And Akeem Tlaib is really playing, has really played well the past couple weeks. That's his second pass breakup today. Just a freshman. And that's the guy that's filling in for your All-American who's now playing offense. Well, that'll help Charles Gordon in the long run to be able to play on a single side of the ball. Because if it, going back and forth between defense and offense, you just can't build the stats. It was, it was killing him. Back to the ground, Corey Ross. Gonna and he'll pick up now. seven yards, which will bring up third down and three. And the clock continues to tick down past three minutes and 15 seconds. Nebraska still 0 for 6 today on third down conversions. This, however, one of their shorter distances to have to cover. They've had one shorter. They just ran a, a quick off tackle, Corey Ross, but he, Kansas stopped it. 
Huskers needing the 40-yard line for a first down. And Taylor will try to throw for it. And he's got it. That's a vintage West Coast offense right there. Ball is caught by Grant Mulkey. It's weird to look at a spotting chart from Nebraska and see 19 different receivers <laughs> all catching balls. You got Mulkey, Hardy, Fluell, and Nunn, LaFleur, Swift, Peterson. They've all caught balls this year. And that doesn't count the tight ends. Well, it's past and Matt Herrien's been out all season long, their number one target. He is done for the year, hopes to come back next year as a medical redshirt. Well, Nate Swift, Nate Swift, uh who's a freshman, a redshirt freshman, really has come on the past two weeks, caught 18 passes in the past two weeks for just over 250 yards. So he has been a favorite target in the past couple couple of uh, couple of outings. Flag on the play. You're going to let it go, so it looks like it's going to be against Kansas. There's a flag on the field. And the Huskers will take this penalty to bring up first down and five. Offside. Defense, both guard penalty, will play first down. Just the third penalty of the day on Kansas. Really pretty clean played game so far. Just three penalties on each side now. Problem for Nebraska is one of them was an illegal block on the 99-yard kickoff return. So first down and five, and now Nebraska at the Jayhawk 30-yard line and trying to put some points on the board with two minutes left in the first half. Taylor sidesteps, has a man wide open, and this will be a Nebraska touchdown. Ball is caught by Terrence Nunn. That's his fifth score of the season. And the Huskers are right back in it at 17-8. It looked like some broken coverage on that because he was eight yards away from the nearest Kansas defender. And a nice job by Taylor to sidestep the pass rush. Jerome, Jerome Kemp, Kemp just couldn't nearest, get there in time. Nearest defender on that play, but yeah, he was, he was uh, wide open. Now Chip, that possession started because of the short kickoff. And Nebraska cashes it in. The extra point is on the way and good, and it's 17 to 9. So instead of holding a 15 point lead going into the halftime break, Jayhawks now lead it by eight. There is some time left. We'll see if Kansas comes out aggressive or not. And a ground level look here. I don't know if that was a zone breakdown or a man to man breakdown. But it's broken, whatever it was, and it's a touchdown for the Cornhuskers. And maybe this offense now is on track. A nice drive there. Six plays, 64 yards. Took just two minutes and 59 seconds. Kansas has a minute 47 to put some more points on the board. And that's the question. Will Kansas be aggressive and try to do something? The answer can probably be found in this kickoff return. That's Hagen's back there with Clark Green. The senior from Kansas City. Whose brother, of course, graduated from KU a year or two ago after uh, graduating from, or after transferring from Purdue. the kickoff with an opportunity to return it. Hagen's will from his own goal line. And he gets close to the 20-yard line, and that's where Kansas will take over. And we'll see how conservative head coach Mark Mangina will go here. Looks like uh, Marino Vitali on the tackle for Nebraska. See that so again? Kansas, will, Kansas will come on out and uh, see what we can do. Green will be the tailback. The Jayhawks will bring three wide receivers out on first down. Quarterback numbers identical, both eight for 13. Difference is Jason Swanson's thrown for 142. Taylor just for 75. Kansas draw play. Clark Green across the 20. Picks up three. 
And Nebraska not interested in calling a timeout just yet. Keep in mind, Kansas did win the toss chip, deferred its decision to the second half, so Kansas will get the football to start quarter number three. I gotta believe you're gonna see another handoff here on second down and seven. And make it second down and six. Clark picked up four on first down. And another draw play. And Clark Green with some room across the 30. He's got a first down, and he gets out of bounds to stop the clock. So, so much for running that thing down. 50 seconds left in the half, and the draw play's been effective two times in a row. Well, you start, you start to get to midfield like this, you start thinking, well, why not? Let's try to put some points on the board, at least get a field goal out of this. So I would expect Kansas not to sit on it. Heck, run another draw play. Pickup of 17 for Clark Green. He's got 11 carries for 31 yards. Had more yards on that carry than he'd had in the entire game. Both teams with two timeouts left. I wouldn't expect Nebraska to call a timeout at this point. Kansas rushed for more than 200 yards as a team last week. So far, just 54 yards today. But now to the air, and Swanson's going to go long. He's got Charles Gordon out there, but he is covered tightly by Courtney Grigsby, the sophomore from Omaha. And we might say handoff on second down. <laughs> Good protection. Really nobody open. Charles without a catch so far today. Now you see number three going downfield, you're going to put two white jerseys on him. Especially in this situation oh, with 45 yeah. seconds oh, yeah. left. There's it's Good thing though is it, op it opens up uh, opens up the uh, opportunities for shuffle pass <laughs> to Clark. It's across the 45, a pickup of seven, which bring up an interesting situation here. Third down and three, you've got 33 seconds. You're one completion away from kicking a field goal. But Kansas will let the clock roll. And KU in no hurry. And Chip, you're shaking your head. You don't like the clock management here. Well, I, re I really think that you, you, you take a chance on this. You've got three, you, you're really in, uh, Unless you call timeout now, you take one chance to get into field goal range. Which won't happen. Clock down to four seconds. This will be the last play. And they hand it off to Clark Green, and you hear a few boos in the audience. So the Jayhawks do get close to midfield, but head coach Mark Mangino choosing to sit on an eight-point lead and get the football to start quarter number three. Kansas leads it 17-9 at the halftime break for Nebraska. Picking up a little momentum there, Chip, right before the half. Well, we'll see what, what adjustments Kansas makes, what adjustment Nebraska makes when we come out here. But Kansas defense clearly dominating the football game. Offense has had, has shown some some pretty good uh, some pretty good play. And uh, second half, we'll see if they can keep it up. Nebraska just 21 rushing yards in half number one, 96 total yards. Kansas leads it by eight. We're back with highlights and stats after this timeout. That's the damage at halftime at Memorial Stadium. Kansas leads Nebraska by a score of 17-9. Mark Simmons scoring on a big touchdown. And then, of course, the block punt by Ronnie Amati. Darren Russ picked it up and ran it in. Right now, the Jayhawks in the situation, Chip, you wanted them in. Score first and get the lead. Let the defense play from ahead. That's right, but Kansas still needs to – They Nebraska picked off an interception. Uh, Kansas needs to take advantage of the turnovers. Kansas really needs to keep the pressure on. The one thing they cannot afford to do right now is sit back and play uh, – Try part, to hang yeah, on. They, yeah, they can't play defense, you know, if you pardon the expression, but they, they can't just hang on. They've got to be aggressive on defense. They have to continue to be aggressive on offense. Take a look at some of the highlights from half and number one. And didn't take long to have very many. Jayhawks on their opening drive, finding a couple of open receivers. Dominic Rue makes the 10-yard grab there from Jason Swanson for a first and then first down. And then the absolute bullet to Mark Simmons 40 yards later. The Lone Star touchdown maker puts KU up 7 to zip. Nebraska, though, fighting back. Jayhawks get stuck deep in their own end zone. And that's where Jason Swanson gets sacked for a safety. That's Corey McEwen who makes the tackle. Huskers trying to come back second and one and third and one. Two, two tries in a row for Cody Glenn and he comes up empty both times and well here's the biggest play of the first half. 
Ronnie Amati with the block, and you get a great bounce. You always need those. Darren Russ picks it up. I like you protecting the, the football. Zone. That's my favorite part of that play. J.O.D., though, good up until the very last possession. The short kick put Nebraska in position to go down and score. KU had another opportunity to get down for a touchdown, but John Cornish gets to the seven. That led to a field goal, which is points on the yards from yeah, Scott it's, Webb. It's still points on the board, but it's frustrating when you're on the seven-yard line, first and goal, and you're not able to convert. And here's the big play for Nebraska in the second quarter. Zach Taylor finding an open Terrence Nunn, his fifth touchdown of the season. And that made it 17-9. The numbers, well, KU dominating just about everywhere. Total yards, time of possession pretty equal, surprisingly. Um, but uh, the numbers look good. Yeah, first down Kansas with, with nine first downs. Nebraska with four. Uh, Nebraska, their first four series on four and out. So the Kansas defense really, brain, really playing strong in the beginning. A uh, couple of mistakes, and, and uh, they're able to get a couple first downs and get a touchdown out of it. But uh, this is by no means out of out of control for anybody. It's still a, it's still a football game at this point. And Kansas, as we mentioned, will get the football to start half number two, winning the toss, then deferring his decision until the third quarter. Let's take a timeout. Third quarter on the way. Kansas trying to beat Nebraska for the first time since 1968. Jayhawks lead it by eight. Third quarters after this. Well, Chip, the Jayhawks will have to take a kickoff and move it again. I think they'd like to take it over at midfield where they had it at the end of the second quarter. This football taken at the goal line by Hagens. The moves to around. the outside, turns the corner, gets across the 30 to the 31, and that's a good starting field position for KU. Good gain for a uh, good gain on the on the return, and Kansas now has pretty decent position for their offense to start off. Here comes Jason Swanson in the first half, 9 of 15, the touchdown, an interception for 149 yards. And the starting lineup on the offensive front still comes in. We still haven't seen Anthony Collins since the personal foul at the end of uh, or at the beginning, I should say, at the beginning of the Missouri game. Very beginning of that Missouri game. The freshman second series, I believe Not it was. Not played since then. And on first and ten, Kansas will hand it off and getting the start here in quarter number three, John Cornish. Cornish had just three carries for 19 yards in the first half. John giving a little push to David Ochoa on his block. It's always nice when the running backs can uh, give a little extra, extra pop. When Kansas came out, the adrenaline was pumping. Let's see if they can keep that going in the second half. Second down and nine. And Jason Swanson on the quarterback keeper. He gets nothing. Well, Nebraska is really sucked into the uh, inside the tackles on uh, their defense. They're really shutting Kansas down up front, which is good because it means that they, they, they recognize that there's a threat for Kansas running the ball up the middle, but you still got to be able to push guys off the rock. So the Jayhawks need the 41 yard line for a first down. Third down and eight. Swanson on the option will pitch it to Cornish. And that pitch a little bit behind him. And you hear the roar from the Nebraska fans that are in attendance. So a quick three and out by the KU offense. And Chip very, very conservative on the first possession. Yeah, very conservative. Half. Nebraska doing a, a real good job of pursuing to the football. They had two guys outside the tackle on that on that play before uh, before even the pitch was made. So not a whole lot of room, even if uh, whether it's a keep or a pitch, not a whole lot of room either way. So Kyle Tucker will kick it away, standing at his own 22, averaging 37 yards a punt. This is just his second punt of the day, and it's a boomer. All the way back inside the 20 yard line. This is none. He gets drilled from behind by John Cornish. And there's a flag on the plate downfield. 
Dominic Rue, there was a, you, you, you see a, you heard a boo from the crowd during the course of that. They thought that Dominic Rue got blocked in the back to keep him away from making the tackle. And then he came back and made and ended up making the tackle anyway. We'll see if there's a, uh, and that's going to be, that's going to be on Nebraska. Kansas is going to get that ball. It's going to be a five-yard penalty running into the kicker, and that, that should, should be, be enough, enough for a first, first down. down. And Banks Floodman makes it official. That's one of those, if you're Nebraska and you watch the replay of that, you're thinking, you got to be kidding me. Number 44. And on the flip side for Kyle Tucker, we'll take that, that acting that acting class this semester's <laughs> paying off. Oh, there was no question he, he was he was rolled into. Wow. I don't know if Tucker needed to land flat on his back in that situation, <laughs> but the officials fell for it, and that's all that matters. That was a legitimate call. <laughs> Those binoculars are crimson and blue colored in the lenses. So first down and 10, Kansas catches a break. And now Swanson will throw it, maybe. He throws it out of bounds and just gets rid of the football. And again, penetration from the Nebraska defensive front. Hola Daganduro. Thank you. And in pursuit, easy for you to say. <laughs> I could say Cornhusker. If you were uh, Jason Swanson, you'd run fast too. He's 290, just a junior, and not a sprinter, just in case you're wondering. Second down and 10. Kansas leads at 17 to 9. We have just started play in the third quarter, 12.33 left. to the ground, Clark Green, and these Nebraska fans, Chip, getting louder. They are getting louder. Well, Kansas not being able to move the football on the ground as effectively as they need to. And Clark got back to the line of scrimmage, which will make it third down and 10. So the Kansas offense has not been impressive so far in this quarter. Jay to racked up more than 200 yards in the first half of total offense. Needing a first down here. Swanson guns it left side. Dominic first down. across midfield, and it is a Kansas first down. And another good. rifle from Jason Swanson. Look at this tight spiral. Good protections. Rodriguez did a good job of staying in front of his man, keeping him engaged. Gave Swanson enough. Enough time to throw the football. That has been an effective route today for Jason Swanson. That's the same one that Mark Simmons caught for the touchdown. Simmons had another one on the other side for a first down. Dominic Rue has caught two of those today. He can throw a rope on those routes. Ball has no arc. It arrives at the same level that it leaves at. Draw play. Clark Green. He'll pick up a couple inside the 45. 13 carries, 32, 32 yards on the day for Green before that carry. And Bo Rood makes the tackle for Nebraska. Kansas with 63 yards now on the ground on 24 carries, so not, not doing as well as they did last week against Missouri. Swanson, far. as it batted down at the line of scrimmage, he was looking for Charles Gordon. I believe that was Wally Muhammad who got a hand on the football. Backup, open defensive end. Can't, Nebraska doesn't run a left-right. On the ends, they don't run a left-right scheme. They have, they've got an open and a, uh, and a base defensive end to take advantage of speed that, that uh, particular players may have. So another big third down situation for Kansas on this drive, just one for two, but then again did get the, the benefit of the penalty on fourth down to keep this drive alive. Fox needs seven yards, Swanson over the middle, pass intended for Foster. KU fans want a penalty flag, but they won't get it. Daniel Bullock's in on the coverage. Lots of, time, lots of time for Swanson on this. Nebraska running a, a twist around the outside. Opens up the middle. And that, uh, yeah, 
Both. They were touching. The question is whether it was whether it was interference or not. It always helps when you pull your arms back like that. Whether you yeah. run into somebody in the back on a on a special teams or if you're a receiver or a linebacker covering somebody. Terrence Nunn makes the catch at the 15-yard line. Not a real pretty kick off the foot of Kyle Tucker, but effective. It pins the Huskers inside the 20. And with KU's defense, that's exactly where you want the Huskers to start from. So the Jayhawks don't score, but Chip, at least the offense moves the football enough, picks up a couple first downs to give the defense a little bit more rest on the sideline. Took four-plus minutes off the clock, and uh, now Nebraska's offense is down where the Kansas defense wants them, where they can make something happen. Punt from deep in their own territory. Kansas gets the ball in even, even better field position. Zach Taylor in the first half, 8 of 13 for 75 yards and the touchdown to Terrence Nunn. Bill Callahan's team starts from the 15 this time. And the Jayhawk fans being allowed for the first time in a while. Corey Ross wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage. Charlton Tack Keith. Tackle made by number 99. He's pretty good. <laughs> he's doing okay. Noticed, he's pretty good. He's doing okay, isn't there's, he? There's a chance he'll be playing on Sundays next season. Jayhawks come with an extra defensive back. Ronnie Amati into the game. Thanks, Floodman leaves. Second down and 10. Here comes the blitz. Jerome Kemp with a big hit. Ball, though, is complete and caught on the Nebraska sideline. And it appears it will be just shy of a first. Nope, it will be a first down. First down for Nebraska. Nate, Nate Swift makes the catch. Take a look at this big hit on Zach Taylor. We didn't get a, didn't get a, didn't get a good shot of it there. But Jerome Kemp brought the wood, as you like to say. Ready to go. So a first down at the 25. One thing you don't want is this Nebraska offense to get rolling. It's the fifth first down of the game for the Cornhuskers. I don't know who, but about six people on that left side of the offensive line jumped. See that many people go, it's I think it's gonna be on the offense. The snap count only got to half of the offense. <laughs> and they all happen to be on the same side of the football. Well, you're geared up like that. And you, you see the guy next to you go, you're, you're thinking. Go. Yeah, exactly. Go. Thinking you're late. That was the good news for you. You always had the football in your hand. Well, you know, in years past, Nebraska always used to let their center go out uh, like half a count early because they would get up into the linebackers into the second level. You used to see pictures of Dave Remington and, and Jake Young. They'd be up to the linebackers before the rest of the offensive line was even was even moving off the football. Well, Terrence Nunn makes another grab. He'll get back the yards lost there on the offsides. A little bit of red, not as many as years in years past. It's always a, a pretty easy trip for the folks from Nebraska to come down here to Lawrence. Second down and eight. Nebraska throwing the football on almost every down now. The dump off to Ross, and he's not going anywhere. Man, Close. Charlton that, Keith almost had an interception on it. Almost play. hit him. <laughs> well, this is one that as soon as Taylor let it go, he was worried because Charlton Keith was in his grill. <laughs> I tell you what, if Charlton Keith would I mean, he, he followed him the entire way there. Had he been a step slower, had Charlton Keith been a step slower, either that pass wouldn't have been thrown at all or Charlton Keith would have had a touchdown. That's a big loss on second down. It's third down now in 14. Huskers need the 35-yard line. Plenty of time. Taylor fires. That ball's incomplete. Theo Baines in on the coverage. 
It was intended for Terrence Nunn, and the Jayhawk D does its job. The Kansas offense will get it back with 7.48 left in the third quarter. That's Theo Baines' second breakup of the year. didn't play much at the start of the year thanks to uh, an injury situation that of course we never know thanks. about the injuries yeah. but um, he obviously feeling better now Sam Cook in to kick it away once again standing inside his own 10 wind is at his back Charles Gordon standing at his 25 24 makes the fair catch and that's where Kansas will get the football back we've got a timeout on the field Halfway through quarter number three, and Kansas continues to lead by eight. Jayhawks lead at 17-9 midway through quarter number three, and we'll get the football for the second time in this quarter. Kansas going into the wind, at least what little wind there is left out here. On this Saturday afternoon, the the day has changed quite a bit. Much warmer and sunnier when we started this thing, Chip. Good offensive. It's getting down to where it's good offensive lineman weather. Fumble on the play, and Nebraska has the football. Mark Simmons made the catch and then coughed it up. Kind of mistakes so that we mentioned the offense could not make. Yeah, that makes the second turnover for Kansas. That interception. And now, and now, and now a fumble. A linebacker Adam Ickes is the one who caused the fumble. Well, particularly turning it over on the 16-yard line. Wow. Reminders of Texas Tech. Red Raiders defense scored a touchdown when the Jayhawks made a mistake at the goal line. Now the defense really will be tested. An eight-point lead and a turnover inside the 20. They'll pitch it out to Corey Ross, and he's going to throw the halfback pass, and it's overthrown. Akeem Tlaib was down there on coverage, and that's the second pass thrown this season by someone other than Zach Taylor. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you something, though. Uh, Nate Swift, the freshman, lost his shoe on this. You can see his, his sock right there. He lost his shoe on the goal line. He's the go-to guy. He has been the last two games. Mm -hmm. 18 passes in the last two games for 251 on the, on the season. 28 for 398. So he has really come on the past couple weeks. And that's really going to hurt Corey Ross's passer efficiency rating. I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was one for one, uh, one for one, 18 yards and a touchdown, if I'm not mistaken. Well, his, his QB rating was 581. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take a hit. <laughs> 581. Who does those stupid statistics? <laughs> we were talking about that earlier. He has, he has thrown, uh, he is the only other person on the Nebraska team to throw a pass this year. Kansas football on Channel 6 brought to you in part by Phone Directories Company. Great people, great books, and great results. Also by hy V, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. And by Jack Ellen, a Honda, your hometown Honda dealer for over 32 years in the Lawrence Auto Plaza. Jack Ellen, a Honda. You're going to like it here. Nebraska 3-2 and two in the Big 12 Conference. Wins over Iowa State at home in double overtime at Baylor 23-14. to 14, And then losses against Texas Tech at home at Missouri. The blowout 41-24. And then again last week in Lincoln to Oklahoma. So with a win today, Kansas can move even with Nebraska in the Big 12 North. Do well, you think the folks up in uh, Lincoln are wishing that uh, Frank Solich was back at the helm? Eh, a few are, I'm sure. A few more will if Nebraska loses this well, game in an hour and a half. That's, that's true. Patience only goes so far. Well, ten and three seasons are no good in bug eater land. Is that actual size? <laughs> I think not. Second down and 10 for Nebraska in the red zone. Going with the trick play on first down. 
Nebraska with only five first downs. Have not been able to move the ball real well. But with a gift like this, Kansas turns the ball over on the 16-yard the line. They've got, some, uh, got something to work with. Taylor going to keep it. And there's nobody out there to stop him. He'll be very close to a first down. In fact, I think he'll have it to make it first down and goal. They're going to spot him on the six-yard line, which is going to be a first down. Zach Taylor doesn't run the football much, just 49 carries for officially negative 49 yards when the day started, which tells you the only time he runs it's when he's being sacked. But he picks up a few yards here. Kansas defense put in the precarious position of having to stop the Huskers in the red zone. Corey Ross on first and goal. He plunges toward the goal line and comes up a half yard short. In fact, they'll mark Kansas it all the way good, back good, at the two. And Kansas, good penetration on that. Tim Allen had a shot at him early. But he just, he did a good job falling forward. Corey Ross falling forward into the... Uh, Onto the yard and a half line. KUD has held from here before. Can it make it happen now? Corey Ross, touchdown, Nebraska, and the Cornhuskers cash in. The Jayhawks mistake inside the 20. 6-19 left in the third quarter. It's 17 to 15. Kansas led this game at one time, 17 to 2. For Corey Ross, that's rushing touchdown number three on the season. And that is the first Kansas rushing touchdown that they've given up back to 2004. To a running back. To a running back. Because, yes, Corey Hodges at Corey Texas Hodges Tech. Corey Hodges at Texas Tech had the only rushing yeah, touchdown one of the touchdown, season. Yes, correct. Against KU's defense. And here's the time two-point conversion. Maybe a little bit early for this, Chip, but Coach Callahan's going to try to tie things up right now. Taylor being chased by Charlton Keith. They throw it up, and it's picked off. And he can run it back for They can Kevin run it back for two. Gets the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's a smart move, though. It is, because you get if two points some, yeah, if you, if you can you, run if it you've back. you've got somebody that you can, that's close, and I think Kevin Kevin Kane a little bit faster than uh, James, James McClinton. McClinton. I, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Marginally. But he was he was the closest guy with the, with the number right there. If they... <laughs> Kevin Kane never really got going. No. Rodney Fowler pretty close by, but still a lot of traffic there. So a break in the third quarter. Kansas still leads it by two, but here come the Huskers. 6-19 left in the third. Two Kansas turnovers have changed this game big time. An interception in the red zone kept KU from scoring at least three points. And a Mark Simmons fumble inside the Jayhawks zone 20 leads to seven in Nebraska points. 6-19 left in third. Let's check in with D.J. Wetter down on the sideline. D.J.? Hey, guys, obviously that was senior running back Corey Ross that scored for Nebraska there. He is the younger brother of former KU wide receiver Roger Ross. Now, Roger Ross led the Jayhawks in receptions his senior year. Corey Ross, coming into this game, led the Nebraska Cornhuskers in receptions out of the backfield with 28. Led all receivers, in fact. So, obviously, he got his brother's hands. He did not get his brother's love of KU, however. <laughs> That's a true story. Jayhawks will take over at the 20-yard line. First down and 10. First down. A big opportunity for the Kansas offense to burn some time off the clock. 6.19 left in the third quarter right here. If they can put together, string together a drive. They've had some success, 11 first downs, but two, two turnovers, an interception that cost them a field goal, three points, and a turnover inside the, inside the 20 that cost them another six. Nine-point difference right there. Offense has been doing well. It just needs to uh, hang on to the football and put it into the end zone right on this drive. And those are Husker fans that you are hearing. John Cornish back into the game, and John Cornish about a step away, Chip, from maybe turning that into a much bigger play. Yeah, he's got, well, he, he has the speed, he's got the explosive, the explosive ability. And there was so nobody in front of him. Boy, he's never down until he's down, and I think if, if somebody's on his leg, and if, 
If he hadn't been pulled down a couple yards ago, I think he'd, he'd still be running. Second down and two after the eight-yard pickup. Ornish now six carries, 31 yards. And there's John Cornish straight up the gut. John Cornish. Touchdown. Goodbye. 72 yards. No flags. No flags. Touchdown, Kansas. And the folks that made the trip from Canada are loving it today. <laughs> Ed is in the crowd, and he just watched John take it the distance. Blocking up front, and boom goes the dynamite. He's off to the races. Seven carries, 103 yards, and this game just changed again. The extra point is good. And I promise you now that Coach Callahan wishes he'd kick the extra point. And that's going to put John at seven carries for 103 yards. I think he wants the ball more. What do you think? It's a pretty impressive drive. Two plays, 80 yards, 44 seconds. All due to number 29. Take a look and at here this. he comes right Good, blo good blocking up front. Everybody tied up. And with a guy like John Corners, that's all you need is a, is a hole to pop open, and he's uh, off to the races. And the safety, Daniel Bullock's the last line of defense. And John Cornish just pushed him out of the way. So the big plays have returned to the Kansas offense after, well, being gone for just about the whole season. We had a 40-yarder to Mark Simmons and a 72-yard run right up the gut, which is where you wanted to run the football for 72 yards. You are a genius. I, I said 100. I said we need 150 to win on the ground too. We're at well, 143 right now. Take a lot take, of time take more left. than that. A lot of time left. <laughs> And the fans with the big man Gino head couldn't be happier. So Lucky and Green back to receive the kick. And Kay was not done a good job of stopping Marlon Lucky. And this will be him from the 10. They're going to get him this time. And guess who? Be back. Brandon McAnderson, the Lawrence High product, comes up with the big hit. Kansas has not trailed in this game. Great looking run. Five twenty-eight left in the third. Kansas 24, Nebraska 15. Defense actually might have been complaining that time that the guys just scored too fast. We didn't get to rest. We haven't said that all season long. Taylor looking long. Fires has an open man but cannot find him. It's Terrence Nunn. Coverage by Jerome Kemp. Good fake. Sucked a lot of people in. Plenty lot, of time. Plenty of time over there. Lots of room. Just couldn't throw uh, a great pass. Just couldn't get it on target. I think Nebraska's band may be bigger than the KU band that's here. <laughs> Is that... <laughs> Does that look right to you? I don't know why I'm mentioning that now. <laughs> Second down and 10. Football at the 13 after the incompletion. This is Ross. Tries to get to the outside. Charlton Keith wraps him up. He'll pick up maybe three, which will bring up third down and long once again. Nebraska just one for eight on third down today, and the reason why well, they've been in this situation, third and long. Yeah, they've only had uh, two real, two real short third down plays. Made one of them. That's the only one they made. They had a third and four. But most of them have been the third and seven, third and six. is the tailback back there with Taylor. 
Taylor dumps it off. Ball is caught. That is a first down. He's got Nate Swift. Theo Baines on the coverage makes the tackle, but that will move the chains and put the football up to the 26-yard line. That's Nate's third catch of the day. That's going to put him at about 26 yards. That's a pretty good guess. Yeah. I figure if he runs 10 yards, the official the official length of the, of the reception will be 10 yards. It's a good chance. I'm smart like that. You're, you are. That's why we pay you the big bucks. First down and 10. Clock rolling now towards four minutes. This is Ross. Nothing on first down. McClinton in there along with Banks Floodman, Kevin Kane. 18 carries. Going to be 19 carries for 32 yards for Nebraska. He came into this game averaging 1.9 yards a rush giving up, and that number yep. is going down. And now the Jayhawk fans on their feet again, second down and long. Ball is tipped and caught by Taylor. <laughs> That'll be a completion to himself, but he should have let it fall incomplete. It's going to be a loss of four yards. Well, I think he was trying to, in a situation like that, you try to pull it down. Because if it's, if it's up, you try to knock it down, it, it may end up in somebody else's hands. You know, you can throw it again. Jamal Ashley tipped it. No, you can't throw it again. He's making that stuff up. Offensive lineman doesn't know what goes on behind him. Down and 15. It's getting louder in here. 241. Kansas leads it by nine. Here comes the blitz. Ball is caught. Tackle is made. Ronnie Amati wraps up Nate Swift. And the Huskers will have to kick it away. So that ball was caught by 17, not 87. That was Todd Peterson. Just his fifth catch of the season. And it's not enough for a first down. Fourth down and 10. Charles Gordon with a chance to move the ball up close to midfield. I don't think he'd like to take one to the house right now, do you? And that's going to be a running into the kicker call there. Maybe roughing the kicker. Kansas has it at the 36 after the Gordon return, but we'll have to wait to see if it's a personal foul or not. I'm going to take a look at this. And I would say blocked by momentum. Momentum took him back in, and that's, oh, that's a fall. It. That's a fall. That's a fake one there. That makes Kyle's, Kyle Tucker's look vicious. for Kansas it's just a five yard variety so Nebraska will kick it again but uh, agree Amadi got blocked in he didn't touch him anyway that's yeah, just a, his, yeah the momentum from the block carried him in and he was, people, he was not, there was no forward motion when he was when he made contact in fact he almost what? tried to help him up watch Amadi almost tries to catch him on the way down watch he's like yeah I, I got gotcha. you oh, you need some help <laughs> he reached out with his right hand well let's give actually a, a chance for a better return on this that is one of the worst penalties though can't review those either. Do you think it's a makeup call from the, the previous one? Yeah. If I'm a Nebraska fan, I'm not really feeling like that made up anything. All the way booming punt. Gordon at the 12 yard line. And nowhere for Charles to go. And that penalty actually cost KU more than five yards. Timeout on the field. Let's take one to a minute 31 left in the third quarter. Kansas leads it 24-15. First down and 10, Jason Swanson hands it to Clark Green. Maybe he'll take one longer than John Cornish. 
across midfield into Nebraska territory. He did a great job. Play like that is designed to give the running back a, an opportunity to either take it on the outside or take it up the middle, depending on how the we're taken closer to the tackle, depending on uh, the depending on the blocking on that play. Took it through the gap and turned it straight up field. And a huge first down into Nebraska territory for Clark Green. He's now got 15 carries for 74 yards after that 39-yard rumble. Here's Clark again, falling forward. Clark's longest run before that one on the season, 25 yards. And now two Kansas running backs for the second week in a row approaching the 100-yard barrier. And Kansas now up to 182 yards on the ground. So a pickup of two makes it second down and eight. I think Clark might be a little winded. So that Just a little have, bit behind him. May have slipped a little bit from Swanson. Yeah, Mark Simmons. He was open. Yeah, he had uh, had nothing but jersey in front of him. He loves the slant, doesn't he? He's good we've at the seen, slant. We've seen that ball several times today. More times than I can remember seeing it maybe all season long. And it's probably a good thing that ball was behind him. Looking at the replay on the Megavision over here. Three, three for nine, which is consistent with their 34% on the year for third down conversions. This, though, a long one. The shuffle pass, and Clark Green stays on his feet. Still on his feet, but he can't get to the first down marker. That'll bring up fourth down, and... A long four and Kansas Kyle Tucker it. time to kick one into the corner of the, uh, the red zone. And Kansas that will happen though in the fourth right quarter. Chip, how long has it been since Kansas has been in this situation? Heading to the fourth quarter with a chance to win. It happened in 99. But KU could not hold on. We have 15 minutes left to break 36 years of frustration. It's 24-15, Kansas by nine. Plays leading Kansas to a nine point lead as we start the fourth quarter. It's 24 15, fourth down and five for the Jayhawks. Kyle Tucker in to kick it away. He's got the wind at his back now, but he won't need it. And look at this thing straight up the elevator shaft. It's going to land at the 11 in Kansas. Look at that. The coverage unit doesn't even have to do anything. Kyle Tucker earned his scholarship on that kick alone. <laughs> That's how he you get it done right there. He has been a very effective offensive weapon for Kansas. And he was named to the final 10 of the Ray, uh, Ray Guy watch list yeah. just this week. So congratulations to him. And a few more kicks like that. He might just win the thing before his time at Kansas is done. Yeah, particularly say he's a sophomore. He's got plenty of time left. Has worked real hard at developing his leg strength over the past year. leave early for the NFL. <laughs> Doubt it. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's a position where you need less development. True. is fun. Stay in college. Agreed. I'd like to go back. 95 yards away now, Zach Taylor. Kansas football on Channel 6 brought to you in part by Dr. Linehan and the Spectacle for all your eyewear and eye care needs. Go see Dr. Linehan and the Spectacle in the Hillcrest Shopping Center at 935 Iowa. And also by People's Bank in Lawrence, the home of banking unusual at 6th and Wakarusa at 23rd and Harper and one day at 31st in Iowa. And also by Jim Clark Motors where you always get a doggone good deal. And by new physical therapy, helping people help themselves. Officials having a little chat on the sideline with head coach Mark Mangino. Did you get a look there at Brian Luke? He was unavailable last week to back up Swanson, but this week I believe he he is available. The injury that he uh, incurred in the Colorado game is better now. 
Well, you've been in a couple of these meetings, Chip. The old offensive line. What's uh, besides grunts and groans? What else are they talking about there? Oh, uh, they're just they're they're talking about Nebraska's doing some uh, some twists and blitz up blitzes up front. So if Kansas is going to start passing the ball more, they just need to make sure on assignments who's picking up whom and make sure on running plays we're coming off the ball because with Clark Green, with John Cornish, all you need to do is show them a little daylight and they can turn something into, uh, they can turn that into uh, a nice play. Well, if you're the KU defense, you'd love to force a mistake down here. Your offense has done enough to give you a nine point lead. And this has got to be on the Cornhuskers, which will be half the distance to the goal line. Prior to the snap, false start. 76 offense. Half the distance to the goal. Remains first. And that is Nebraska's sixth penalty on the day, 35 yards. They averaged 60 yards in penalties coming into today, so uh, still well below that. But they've come at inopportune times. Had a touchdown called back on a, on a kickoff return and have had a couple that have really pinned them back deep in their own territory. Running into the kicker on fourth down. Here's a safety, you betcha. Barreling right through the front of that line. Number 56, one of the youngsters. It's Eric Butler, the sophomore. And Chip, you called it. <laughs> I mean, nobody well, laid a hand on Eric Butler. That's his second sack of the season, and this one counts for two. Well, Kansas bringing a lot of heat on that play. You think? <laughs> you know, you're, you get and, and it paid off. Taylor thought about trying to unload it, but then... And we're starting to see some red jerseys leave. So a strange occurrence. We've had two safeties on the day, one for each team. Yeah. So the Jayhawk lead now is 11. Horn Huskers will need two scores, including a two-point conversion with a field goal to tie this game. So the free kick will be in the form of a punt into the win. And Brian Murph, did he call for a fair catch? The officials are saying yes, but I never saw him wave his hand. Brian Murph questioning the call. I didn't see a motion for one. I didn't see a motion for one either. And that's not one that you can review. And by in speed up by rule, any waving motion pulls the ball. Waving motion, first down. We'll take a look at this. I have no idea what the, that's just a blown call. Head referee Randy Crystal tried to, uh, Tried to tell us about it, but DJ Wetter had a better look. DJ, what the heck just happened down there? Hey, guys, I was right down there along the sideline. Murph put his hand in the air almost to just follow the ball or, or signal that he was getting it. There was no signal made, though, and his hand did not even extend above his helmet. So it's really interesting to, to see that call be made. Still first and ten. Well, the capacity crowd today, 51,750, which is a brand new record at Memorial Stadium. Not surprising. And that doesn't count the people on the hill. And a lot of them are from Nebraska. Yeah. <laughs> Not as many as in years past, this though. This is true. Jayhawks back to the ground. It's John Cornish, man, he is tough to tackle. The 
Take a look at this. Bobby Whitaker, number 77, making a pull around here. John Corner stays right on his hip. And that's exactly the way the play is designed. And John Corners makes a decision which way to go based on how uh, how Whitaker's blocking on that. Bo Root had a real tough time trying to bring down John Cornish. So give him three yards on first down. Second down and seven. Play clock down to five. Kansas going to run the option. Swanson's got Gordon out there, and he gets ripped to the ground. Tackles made by Adam Carricker, the defensive end, on that right side. He was not fooled. Gordon never touched this football. In fact, Charles Gordon has not caught a pass today. Leading receiver so far for Kansas with four receptions, 52 yards, one touchdown, Mark Simmons. Clark Green right behind on that shuffle pass he had four receptions and 46 yards but that shuffle pass accounted for uh, 39 of those and again Jason Swanson possibly changing the play looking long he's got a man wide open it's Mark Simmons across midfield first down Kansas and the Lone Star touchdown maker hauls in another one Good all protection, the all, the, all the time in the world for Swanee to throw this ball, but he releases it pretty quick anyway. As soon as he sees that Mark Simmons is ahead of his man, is beating his man, tosses it up there. It's the same guy that didn't make a catch until the fourth quarter last week. Mark, number two, number one on all-time receptions. Uh, number two behind Willie Vaughn needs about uh, 250 more yards after the attack on this 88 to be the all-time uh, yardage leader. That play good for 36 yards. Draw play, Clark Green, this one goes for another eight. And now Kansas just chewing up big chunks of yards. Tackle made by Bo Rude. And that's gonna put Clark Green at 85 yards. He's only 15 away from being 100. John Cornish is at 100 already. It's been 10 years, actually just over 10 years, since Kansas had, had two 100-yard rushers. That was back in September of 95 with L.T. Levine and June Henley versus TCU, down from your neck of the woods. You betcha. John Cornish. Going to be just shy of a first down on second down and two. That game, who was that game? Is that on the road at TCU or versus TCU here? Versus TCU, I believe it was here. 95, no, that was at TCU. That was at TCU. Yep. I'm down at Eamon G. Carter Stadium in Fort Worth. So I don't recall that one. I don't believe we've ever played TCU in this stadium. I think that was a home and home. I think we did play him here. We'll look that up another day. We've got other streaks to worry about now. 11:44 left we'll in the get our, fourth. Get our staff working on that. Third down and a short one. Jason Swanson over the top of the pile, and he should have it across the 25. He didn't need much. Maybe that game was here. It was here. KU won that game 38 to 20. Must have been real memorable for both of us. In front of a uh, crowd of 34,000. 51,000 here today. On a, a new, capacity a of 50,000. Memorial Day record. A Memorial, Memorial Stadium record here on this day. It's a lot of people in here. First and 10, Kansas. And the Jayhawks will keep it on the ground. Jason Swanson. Lunges forward for a yard. The clock rolling now under 11 minutes. Kansas by 11. It's 26-15. Mark Simmons, five catches, 88 yards on the day. He's been the favorite target of Jason Swanson, who's completed 13 of 23 passes for 191 yards. He would love to add a touchdown on this series. Mark 
Green picks up a couple more down to the 21, which will bring up a third down and seven. A field goal would make it a 14-point game. It is still a beautiful day here in Lawrence as we trees changing colors. Beautiful looking back up the take hill. A, take a view up the hill, yeah. Third down and seven. Swanson puts it in the air. He's got a first down. Brian Murph fights inside the 10 and he is fired up. First and goal, Kansas. But Kansas, Kansas started this drive with 14.45 on the clock just after the beginning of the fourth quarter. Now it's 9.54, so they have burned five minutes off the clock, and that is not something that Nebraska wants to see. It's quite a turnabout to uh, have Kansas using up clock time, running, running, passing the football against the University of Nebraska. Kansas still up by 11. The football is just inside the 10, so no more first downs from here. to Clark Green. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Lance Brandenburg is the one number 40 that got back there to make the play. And, you know, that fouls things up for second down and third down, doesn't it? Kansas over the 400-yard mark now in this game. The numbers are ridiculous. 403 for Kansas offensively, just 133 for Nebraska. 201 rushing, 202 passing. Pretty balanced attack for the Hawks, I would say. Second down and goal. Swanson looking over the middle for Brian Murph, and that one's off target. Jay Moore providing the pressure. Time off the, the right end, he may have beaten. Yeah, it looked like Matt Thompson. Jay, Jay Moore, I believe, right, got the inside the path on Matt Thompson. A little bit of, little too much pressure on Swanee. Had to unload that one a little bit early. So here we go. Third down and goal from the 12. Swanson lobs it to the end zone for his favorite target, and it's caught. Is it caught? Touchdown! Mark Simmons, unbelievable! What a catch! What a catch! These two guys just love hooking up for touchdowns. Kansas State last year was unbelievable. This one, almost as good. Well, it's a quick, you know, he would... What a great catch. Oh, no doubt. No, I, I can't describe it. What a great catch. All laid out. And Kansas has opened up a 17-point lead. Add another. It's 33-15. to 15. And the Nebraska fans. Heading to the exits. And Mark Simmons, who had one touchdown on the season coming into this game, has two. I think Simmons would like uh, Jason Swanson to have been the quarterback all season long. The Lone Star touchdown maker does it again. He's got six catches for 100 yards. And DJ, I see a lot of red heading for the hill. That's right, guys. You know, it was hard for me, but I talked to some fans before the ball game, talked to the Husker fans. I said, are you nervous? They were confident. They said, we got the streak on our side, and we like playing here in Lawrence. They come down, they have a good time. They're not nervous anymore because I just watched them leave. Yeah, they're not worried now. 8.33 left. The Kansas defense will have to fall apart for Nebraska to come back in this one. Check out a second look. Mark Simmons in the corner. Stretches out, makes the grab. Got a timeout on the field. The Jayhawks, eight minutes and 33 seconds away. Leading by 18. Take another look at this uh, touchdown from 
Swanson to Simmons. It's pretty. Nice throw, all laid out. Nice catch. Great concentration on the football. And the Jayhawk D would love to add an exclamation point to this thing, giving up just 133 yards today. And a deep kick, which will be brought out by Lucky. And he does manage to get across the 20, and that's where the KU defense will set up shop. Having only surrendered 29 rushing yards today on 20 carries. First down and 10, Huskers have to do something now. Zach Taylor has not been great today. 13 of 20 for just 104 yards. It's all been short Huck. passes like this, and now other mistakes being made. Starting, to lose, ball. starting to lose their concentration. From Grant Mulkey. Those Nebraska fans that were still uh, claiming to be okay with this West Coast offense may not so after this 130-yard output. Even, even in the air, 104 yards. They came, came into this game averaging uh, from a passing perspective. Taylor, ball is tipped. Will it be picked off? Almost. Charlton Keith almost did it all by himself. They've been averaging 221 yards a game passing coming into this contest. And they're nowhere close to that. that went off Keith's helmet. And actually, Zach Taylor made a great play to keep yeah, Charlton to Keith from catching that. I'm guessing if Keith comes down with that, he flicks Zach Taylor away like a fly <laughs> and runs into the end zone. He is. Charlton Keith is playing the game of his life today. Third down and 10. Taylor's just going to throw one up in the air long. And it's almost picked off by Akeem Tlaib. He had perfect coverage down the sideline. And it's another three and out for the Kansas defense. That was an 18 second possession chip for the Nebraska offense. When the West Coast offense is not firing on all cylinders, it's a quick three and out. The momentum is building. Candace would love to score again. That ball dropped by Cook. He gets it away, and Gordon's going to let it hit and roll and roll and roll. This is going to be a long punt. And that's a 60-something yarder. We've got a timeout on the field. 7.55 left. Kansas in control. It's 33-15. For the first time in 36 years, the Jayhawks are on the verge of celebrating after the Nebraska game. Don't blink. Don't adjust your set. That is correct. Kansas 33, Nebraska 15. We are in the fourth quarter with 7.55 left to play. And Kansas has the football. Jayhawk football right here on Channel 6 brought to you by Lawrence Automotive Diagnostics. We stand behind our work and we care. Also by KC Bobcat, one tough animal. By the mailbox. Come to the mailbox for all your packing and shipping needs. We know how. And by LMH, the right care right here, right now. Is this the day? It's looking more and more it like it. I, 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 I could start, I think, I could start talking about it. It's time to start running up Gore, Kevin. <laughs> We've got a few years of frustration. Oh, boy, it's payback time. Go long. That's right. I just wish it would have been us instead of Texas Tech two years ago with the 77. The, the drop, the 70 hammer. It was last year. It was last year. Down in Lubbock. John Cornish hit behind the line of scrimmage and dropped. Nice penetration by Lee, uh, Lakeven Smith, the nose tackle. 
senior from Macon, Georgia. So John Cornish's possession is one and done, and here comes Clark Green. Well, that, that, puts, that, puts, that puts John at 101, 101 yards. It's going so the wrong way. <laughs> going the wrong way. He was at 107. got to get 15 more for Clark. Well, he's got he's 19 carries for 85. 10 yards for 101. And look at him go. He's going to get about eight or nine of them right there. Again, the last time that Kansas has had, it's been 10 years since Kansas has had two 100-yard rushers. Continues to roll down just under seven minutes right now. KU has no intentions of letting this thing stop. Clark Green six away from the century mark. They'll give him nine on second down, which brings up third down and seven. He's going to be. It's going to be tough to beat John Cornish's uh, yards per carry, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ten. Bad ten snap. Yards right Shovel now. pass to Cornish. He's got to turn the corner. And that play uh, a little, little okay. trouble from the start. Bobbled snap. Cornish can't get there. Maybe one. Gonna bring on Kyle Tucker. But the Jayhawks do keep the clock rolling and take another minute and a half to two minutes off. They're starting to gather at the gates, leading onto the field in the student section. Grigsby back deep for the Huskers. And you averaging just three yards per play. And barely a yard rushing per play. Kyle Tucker with a bomb. Grigsby inside his own 30. John Cornish trying to get him. And he's finally pushed out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Booming, booming punt. Well, he's impressive, isn't he? Tucker. I hate to talk up a kicker, but, you know, he's good. He, he, uh, he impacts the game. He really puts KU in a position where the defense has a lot more field to work with. When I say and, I that turn, and that in turn leads to the leads to the offense being in better field position. When I say I hate to talk him up, I mean for the team as a whole, because you don't want him punting a lot, but certainly he deserves all the credit. Timeout on the field, 533 left. In past years, Chip, we've been flipping through the media guide with 533 left, trying to find stats to fill the time, and not so this year. Kansas leads it by 18. Kansas football on Channel 6 brought to you by Dr. Van Blericum, helping you find the beautiful smile you've always dreamed of. That's Dr. Van Blericum at 843-2636. Also by Crown Toyota, the new indoor kingdom is now open. Come see the largest indoor showroom in the region. Well, the lowest total yards that Nebraska has had this year has been 279 versus Missouri. And it's picked off Kevin Kane. Can he be one man? Get in there, big fella. Touchdown, Kansas. Touchdown, Kevin Kane. And a penalty comes out late for celebration, but who cares? Celebration number 45, touchdown. Who cares? Who cares about the celebration? Kevin Kane, we just mentioned it, Chip. The defense could have a chance to make an interception. You know that Nebraska's going to put it in the air, and the kid from Rockhurst High picks it off and runs it in. Well, there are some good defenses in the nation, and Chip, we certainly haven't seen them all. But I think this Kansas defense certainly has put itself in the top couple in the land, not just the conference, but in the nation. And next week, it will be tested even more. Yeah! Extra point is good, and the Jayhawks have scored 40 against Nebraska. Now let's get the media guide out and start looking up some really weird stuff. 
The last time KU scored 40 against Nebraska. Let's put our back stat team on it back here. John Rinkenball. It has been a long time. I don't remember too many 56 to 48 losses no. in the streak. Has KU ever scored 40 against Nebraska? That's the question. Scored 47 in 1927. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, they lost. This is the most that Kansas has ever scored against Nebraska. Other than that, the highest was 31 points. And that was in 1960. I'm 30. sorry, 36 in 1899. Remember that one? Well, that was yeah. A big day I was just a freshman. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it it wasn't so me? much a hill then. A monumental day at Memorial Stadium. A record crowd. Record crowd, record score. And a record broken. Record 36 result. 36 straight. Now well, this gives Scott Webb a little something to aim for. Can he get one to the end zone from the 20? The wind is blowing at his back. And boom. Goes the dynamite. Goes, goes the goes dynamite. Goes over his head. And oh, it goes out oh. of the lawn. Oh, and Webb in midfield just puts his head to the sky thinking, you got to be kidding me. I kicked it 80 for 79 yards. And it goes out of the one. That was a heck of a kick. Well, 523 left. Will Nebraska continue to throw? My guess is yes. And at last check, you'll know this final score by the time you watch this at home. But Texas was beating Baylor by a couple. 62 to 0 was last check. And that's where Kansas heads next week. With an above 500 record at 5-4 and four and a 2-4 and four mark in the Big 12 kick. Conference. Out of bounds. 30 off. But this First offense is playing much better. David Ochoa has huddled the offense on the sideline right now, and he's talking to him. And my guess, if he's telling him anything, he's telling him that uh, Clark Green needs six more yards to get 100. You think he knows? Oh, they know. Uh, those centers, they keep track of stats in their head during the game. In their right? head. He's doing he math. He's doing smart. algebra right now. Algebra. Shortest distance between two points is a straight line in the end zone, right? <laughs> straight line in the opposite direction. Yep. And the Rock Chalk Chan folks to start with 523 against Nebraska. Are you kidding me? And I think Kevin Kane wants to score again. <laughs> I think Charlton Keith wants it. Brandon Perkins drops Taylor back at the 40, and the yardage total is going backwards. For Perkins, that's his ninth sack of the season. He's been very effective. They put him in in passing situations, which is, at this point in the game, just about every down for Nebraska. He's got good speed. And he gets to the quarterback. Nine-yard loss, and now the Huskers have just put it on the ground. And Charlton Keith is there to bring him down. Pick up a yard. It's third down, and... What an unbelievable day in Lawrence, Kansas. Third down and 18. Taylor will go from the shotgun. Quick pass, ball caught. It is complete, but shy of the first down. And Obviously, Nebraska will go for it in this situation. France Hardy makes the grab. And next week's game against Texas will be on the national television chip. A 2.30 start against Texas on ABC. I think the network is pretty happy about what's going on here today. Fourth and five. Ball is tipped, incomplete. Kevin Defense Kane. holds. Kevin Kane thought he had a chance at another one. I think he did, but it just popped. 
popped past him just a little bit too fast. And the offense gets the football back. I don't know who got his... I don't know if that was Tim Allen got his, got his hand up. I'm not sure. Might have been Eric Butler. Well, how about six yards for Clark Green? Six yards for Clark Green. I got a better idea. How about 55 for Clark ha, Green? There we go. He's going to be out there, and BMAC is there as well, and BMAC won't carry it. He will block. Unless, of course, you're going to go from the shotgun and try to put... Another seven on the board through the air, but I can't imagine that here. This should be an inside handoff to number 30. Go deep. Yeah, how about the BMAC? He'll get a chance. Clark, Clark will touch it again. Pick up of a yard for Brandon McAnderson. Nice block by Clark Green. On the ground, 204 yards rushing. The second week in a row, Kansas has gone over 200. And Kansas will improve to a perfect 5-0 at home, 0-4 away from the stadium. And Chip, sure would have liked to have that Oklahoma game here maybe, huh? Yeah. Instead of Arrowhead Stadium. Well, I'd like to have this offense in, in Arrowhead. I'd like yeah. to have this offense. Uh... Another handoff to BMAC. Maybe Clark Green won't get another carry. Have this offense when we play Texas Tech. Clock down to 240 and rolling. I don't think there's anything anybody's going to be able to do to keep these students off the field. They are Coach gathering. Mangino, they, they ran a, a message before the game asking fans to stay off the field after the game, but, man, I wouldn't want to be one of those guys in red jackets down there that is part of the crowd control. So I formation now. Clark Green's still in there. He gets the carry. He needs six. Clark Green has six. He's got more. He's Clark got it. Green may have a first down. And Andy. that's going to depend. They're going to they're going to measure that, but that's going to put him at the century mark. First time in 10 years that it's happened for Kansas. Two running backs over 100 yards. And if that ball is touching the 45 yard line, it's a first down. And they're going to measure it to the dismay of 50,000 fans. First down, doesn't it? Well, how many Nebraska fans do you think are here? I say 51,000. 20,000 fans are probably hoping he didn't get it. Maybe 15. That's a first down, right? Are you kidding me? Look at that again. They're going to go for it, which I think is a smart move. You betcha. What a play action I mean, fake. It, How about I, a play action fake and throw one long to Chuck G right here in the end zone? <laughs> well, there'll be there'll probably be eight guys in the box trying to stop that quarterback sneak. Coach Callahan be doing another one of these <laughs> weird motions that he was reprimanded for earlier in the week. I think Jason Swanson will probably fall forward. And he got it. And that, my guess, is going to be the last real offensive play. They'll probably just go victory formation now and take a knee. Or at least take a knee once and then... Cesar fake, Rodriguez fake, fake with a big knee. first down. Mark Simmons is wanting the crowd to react. You know, Mark made up for the fumble. He made a mistake, but boy, did he ever deliver on the touchdown catch in the corner from Jason Swanson. DJ on the goalpost yet? I don't know. Is he guarding? Guarding the goalposts? Well, I hand off to Clark, and hopefully he didn't lose yards That's back. And we lost our stats momentarily. <laughs> I 
Well, DJ's a lot closer to the action than us. Let's check in with him. Hey, guys, I'm a little nervous for my safety down here. The fans <laughs> are gathering. But real quick, Simmons is over 100 yards receiving. The last time KU had two 100-yard rushers and a 100-yard receiver, 1980 against Colorado. Kerwin Bell, Walter Mack rushing, and David Verser with the receiving. That's good work, DJ. That's real good work. That's why we pay you the big bucks down there. Jason Swanson will fall forward and the plays in this one are done. Kansas will beat Nebraska for the first time since 1968. Final score of 40 to 15 and they better just take those goalposts down right now. Last week, one of the crew members that did that got hit in the shoulder when the goalpost came down. Well, they're asking fans to stay off the field. So maybe they will, maybe they won't. That's the end of the game, and the fans are going to come onto the field. There's no doubt about this one. The goalposts at one end are down, and they're not going to get them down at the other end. And for the first time since 1968, Kansas celebrates a win over Nebraska. And it happens today at Memorial Stadium, the largest crowd ever at Memorial Stadium. And they're down in the north and the south. They were not able to get it down. And this is always the dangerous part. That's why they, they, they take them down and they move away. It doesn't matter if you've got the pole, the posts. Kansas dominates again, Chip. 138 total yards for Nebraska. Meanwhile, Clark Green and Rack John Cornish both with 100 yards. And right at 100. 101, 100, and 100. That may be a hometown spot, too, on that 100. <laughs> he did lose a couple of yards on that last yeah. carry, didn't he? of goalposts going to like the University of Kansas for the second week in a row. KU will have to order and this one will be a little more expensive because this one's going to be broken off as opposed to the other ones just coming down. Oh, and don't get under those. That's what everybody worries about. Well, they finally got them down and I don't think anyone got hurt. Thank goodness. Well, they'll make their traditional plunge into Potter Lake. <laughs> their weekly tradition. Yeah, the weekly tradition now. Well, Chip, how about this win? What does this mean for the program? Coach Mangino on many occasions has said one win doesn't make or break a program, but this is monumental. This is no one of those. About it. Well, Coach Mangino will bring the team out after all this dies down and take a picture of the, the team in front of the scoreboard because that's what he usually does on big wins. There's DJ Wetter. Good news. He's still alive. We saw him down there. Wandering I, just, I don't understand why, like on the north end here, where, they, where they're, they're taking the base off. Well, they won it all. Look at some of the numbers, Chip. Again, Nebraska, Zach Taylor, just 14 of 26 for 117 yards. Corey Ross, 16 carries for 30. The Huskers rush 22 times for 21 yards. That's less than one yard per carry. Charles Gordon is at midfield with a number of people around him. It looks like he may have been hurt somehow. I'm going to keep working for myself. May have gotten mobbed by fans. He may have. He's limping off. I don't know if we can get a shot of that. At the 50, there's a crowd of people right there. That would be a huge loss indeed. And correct Charles Gordon being helped off. And of course, that one of the reasons why they don't want fans on the field, but after a win like this, no chance. As Kansas, though, wins at 40 to 15. And Chip, I know you're keeping, there he is there. It's those kind of things that I think coaches and administrators are concerned about not only the go post falling down on, on a fan that well, you, yeah, you died a few you weeks get, ago in a, in a smaller oh, school. You get, you just uh, can't get to the locker room. 20,000 people out there just rushing out, and it's a big melee. We've seen all sorts of problems that have happened with that. It doesn't look like anybody's uh, 
injured down the south end, which was the, the area of concern. Now there is somebody down in the south end. He looks okay. Police are talking to him. It's on the two and a half yard line midfield. Well, if you, I mean this in a nice way, but you wouldn't have gotten hurt if you hadn't run out on the field. With the people running out there, the only ones to blame. But let's talk about the win. Kansas now improves to five and four, Chip. Bowl aspirations is still very much alive. It's a tough, tough game next week down in Austin, though. They play against, play against Vince. Texas, Vince Young, and, and uh, it's a... Uh, it's a tough place to play, and it's a tough team to play. And the Longhorns dropped at least 60 at Baylor today. They'll be ready to go, and with the Kansas defense, Kevin Kane putting the uh, the exclamation point on this victory. He picks it off, and I don't think anything would have kept him out of the end zone except for himself. Big block, big block at the end of that play. Well, but back here in three weeks, yes, the sir. Saturday after Thanksgiving. You betcha. Uh, and a lot could be riding a on that game. A lot could be riding on that game. That may be the uh, the magic six win. How about the job by Jason Swanson? 215 yards through the air. He did throw the one interception, but threw two touchdowns to Mark Simmons. This one was real pretty. And a great job by Mark Simmons. One of the better catches he's made all year. Absolutely, without a doubt. Well, that will do it from Memorial Stadium. We'd like to thank everyone who uh, joined us. Well, let's take another look at a couple highlights. And this is the safety, the one that really energized the crowd. Big, big Eric play. Butler. Eric Butler, number 56. And we'll see yeah. you in three weeks. Yes, well, that'll do it from Memorial Stadium. Kansas 40, Nebraska 15. Enjoy it, Jayhawk fans. Hopefully this won't be a once every 37 year deal from now on. Candace improves <laughs> at five and four overall. I'd like to thank Dave Severance for all his help in the truck. For Chip Buddy, DJ Wetter, I'm Kevin Romery. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Jayhawks win it by 25.